Why not? Go ahead, Lee. Start and we'll talk about <laughs> dirty feet. <laughs> this show is presented by On It. The Church of What's Happening Now is all brought to you by CISO. S E E S O dot com. Go to CISO dot com for bingeable comedy anytime, anywhere. And our listeners get your first two months for free when you enter promo code Joey at checkout. You could take those with you. Mediocre weed for the garage. Yeah. I'll take one of these. Thank you. Show is also brought to you by Helix Sleep, where you can buy mattresses online customized for you for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to helixsleep.com slash joey to get $50 off of your order. helixsleep.com slash joey. And the show is brought to you by MVMT Watches. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash church right now to get 15% off of their amazing stylish watches. I have mine. It's black on black. I love it. I'm Go looking at it right now. It's beautiful mvmtwatches.com slash church to get 15% off with free shipping and free returns. Kick that fucking mule, Lee. It's Monday night, cocksucker. November 14th, bitches. Four days away from my anniversary of kidnapping Ken Vela. <laughs> 29 years. Yeah. Here we go. I'll be in Houston, Texas. The Church of What's Happening Now, Greg Fitzsimmons, my Goomba of Death, Lee Syatt. Kick that mule, Lee. I don't hear it. Kick it. You're playing games with me. that motherfucker oh shit speaking of dirty feet turn that shit off before we join the podcast I was telling uh, I don't want to sound like Trump Jr. here but I was telling because I don't even know what sexist is now this word has me all scared yeah you gotta be careful you gotta be careful but the problem was I'm on the fucking plane the other day I'm on JetBlue like a doctor Mm -hmm. and I'm watching the fight it's on FX and I like Amy Adams. That's her name. Amy, Amy Adams. Adams. I think Amy Adams is beautiful. Amy Adams looks like every Irish girl I dated from the seventh grade to the eleventh. You know, and we held hands. There was no sex in those days. I didn't have the fucking heart. I would go for a tit from time to time in the winter yeah. time. Right. But there's something about them being Irish that just. There was this girl Colleen that had that same color hair. Yeah. Was it Chile? That St. Michael's. She used oh, to, you told me about this. She used to rock my That's fucking right. world, Colleen. That's right, you told me about this. You know, then I switched, I jumped, I jumped book, and I started dating this other girl, Kathy. We were, we were Also good. Irish. Oh, beautiful. We were big cheeks. We used to fucking run together at night, and one night we just started swapping spit, and we'd hold hands and then walk home like nothing happened. No sex was involved. Yeah. Then I dated one of her friends for a while. I don't even want to say their names because people from the area listen to this shit. And oh, I, I love him, love him. But yeah. there's one scene where, uh, what's his name? The fucking dude, Marky Wahlberg. Marky Wahlberg is is about to have sex with her, and she's got a bra on and panties, and you can see that the panties smell. Like you know when you look at panties and they have like little skid marks in the back. <laughs> that shit turns me on too, right? And it's like a shadow. And she's not the perfect woman in the world. She's just got a face that could just stop you in your tracks. But her body is not like a super body. But when she falls onto the bed, her feet, except for the arches, are just covered black. And let me tell you something, my dick almost blew up on the plane, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if the stewardess was cute, I would have asked her for a hand job. And, shit. <laughs> and that's a jet blue stewardess. That's a jet blue that's stewardess. That's fucking, that's not a good... Let me tell you something, I, I, love, I love Irish women. Yeah. I was thinking about how With my daughter has feet. that color hair now. Yeah. Like my, my wife is fucking Strawberry Irish blonde. and Indian. And my daughter's got it now, and it's everything I ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's so weird how it hits home now. It came to haunt me. Mm. What I really loved came back to fucking haunt me. I love all that dirty Irish shit, the feet. I love women. I love all that that skin color. A little cellulite, a little bit. She's got Amy Adams got a little mole on the side of her face. She even had a little bit of a gut at the bar when she did a shot. Oh. Sends me over yeah, the fucking absolutely. top. Absolutely. I, I missed almost East Coast women. Like, I miss them. I, I'm not around a lot of East Coast women out here. Like, Vicky Pezza. Like, I love Vicky Pezza because she, like, the women at, at the shows 
were just yelling at their boyfriend, and it was I, like I almost missed it. Like, oh, I, the girls at Foxwoods were fucking banging. Yeah. I mean, banging from A to Z. Those guys, I got to hand it to anybody who showed up at Foxwoods or, or the fucking Wilbur. You brought some fucking heat, Jack. Yeah. They brought heavy artillery out there. You didn't show up with no Quincy bitches. You showed up with some... Uh. <laughs> you didn't show up with yeah. no shipyard bitches. Yeah, they stopped and, and I'll tell you what, there's like three or four hot ones up in Quincy that will rock your world. They don't even know how hot they are. Yeah. Like uh, the chick that played the, the town. What was that movie with? Oh, um, the town. Uh, okay, the Blake Lively. That broad played it to the fucking hilt. Mm. Just a dirty Irish girl at a bar that goes out every night for a good time. I love those girls. Yeah, I just love blue, those the girls. only makeup is and just you, some blue one of the and eyes. And you're not gonna fucking tell them not to go out every night. Yeah, that's gonna stop right there because they'll knock the fuck out of you. <laughs> you just take them home three nights a week and you have a great time with them. They puke. <laughs> they always puke after you give them a stabbing, right? <laughs> And you got to kiss them and shit. You don't give a fuck by that point. You did what you had to do and shit. They wake up. What happened? I don't know what happened. They wake up. You're down at the bottom of the bed licking their dirty feet. Oh, loving every fucking minute. And I don't lick up. toes. I don't lick toes. That's disgusting. <laughs> and but I like the dirty feet, but once we get in the bed, you got to wash those hoofs. You wash I don't. I can't have those dirty hoofs on my bed. Do and you shit. wash their feet? I got a fun. No, no, no. What am I, Jesus? Jesus I, I'm not John a fun, the I got a fun guy tell myself. I'm walking around with duct tape on it and shit. <laughs> Sometimes I get radio waves. I'm like a fucking antenna now with my little fun guy fucking toe. You gotta get those those sneakers with the toes cut out. Oh, of them. this fun guy toe is killing me Ugh. because like for six months it'll just throb at night. The fun guy comes alive. It thro- hurts? Yeah. I thought it was just growing so like So again, this ecosystem. weekend, I go in the tub, oh. and I just sit there for Like, I only do it in hotels. I bring the heavy-duty artillery to the hotels and shit. The, the industrial nail cutters. Yeah. And the shit you clean the fun oh. guy out. So I go in the tub. I soak that shit. Oh. I cut those nails. And I take them, and I sniff them real good. <laughs> Do you save it for after the show? I leave them for the maid. Yeah. I put a 20 right on top of them. There you go. Have a party, cocksucker. She comes in the room. She listens to the couch. There's a thousand little fucking fungi nails everywhere. All different colors. Green, purple. They're like the gay flag. They cut holes in the fucking oh, cushions. Jesus so Christ. sharp. Oh, my God. Sometimes I cut them. And poke my wife with them. I was telling her, I'll just poke her. And she'll go, What the fuck is that? It's a fungi nail. Keep it up. It's like a snake tooth. She's going to get like an infection. I'll, take, the, on the fungi I'll take this to a concert. I'll stab like 18 people. 16 will start scratching within minutes and shit. That's what I should do. Take a fungi nail out and do a show of me stabbing people with my fungi nail. Can I stab you with my fungi nail? See what Get to eat oh, it. that's it. I'm going to let them grow. Uh-huh. I'm sell it after the grow. show. I used to date this girl. She grew up, she used to, she grew up in a cult. Mm. And one of the jobs she had to do was cut the fucking master's toenails. Oh. And I go, what do you mean? And she goes, they grew over his toe. So once a week, we'd have to go upstairs. He weighed like 500 pounds. Oh. They all had to suck his dick. No shit. He fucked all their moms. It's a horrible How story. How old was she? 14, oh, 14. Yeah, she basically grew up in that fucking cult. And she still talks to her parents. I would fucking chip in with my brothers and have them hit by a truck. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You dirty motherfuckers. You want to be freaks and move into a cult? Do it on your own time. Leave me yeah. with my aunt right. who goes to church on Sundays. <laughs> you know, you're going to take me with you to some fat yeah. fuck's house. Yeah. He's going to fuck us all in the ass. <laughs> Clipping toenails. And the father's sleeping at night while everybody's getting fucked, including his <laughs> wife. Because they had seven kids, but three of them belonged to the cult leader. Oh, oh no shit. But they took them with them and sold them as their own. And when you see the whole family together. Sold them? Like, you know, they oh. sold them the story Came that they were parents. Them. You're crazy. Mm. We're your dad. Mm. So four kids have a lot of teeth. And the other three kids are just sitting there fucking with regular fucking smiles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and nobody's smiling. Everybody's yeah. frowning. Yeah. Because everybody's confused. Why does he have blonde hair? <laughs> <laughs> what a shame in this huh. country. Oh, my God. The cults. It's Part of it seems appealing to me at this point, you know. To start a cult, I just need to come up with some crazy shit, you know. Like, I think I, I, think I would run a good cult. What I, qualifies it as a cult? You like, can't leave. Okay. Oh shit! You can't. Oh no. Yeah. No, you got to stick around. But I think that uh, 
I think I, I wouldn't fuck the girls. I'd let everybody get laid, you know, and I think we'd, we'd raise some money. But uh, I wouldn't hog it, spread it around, let everybody have some fun. But get a fucking, get some land, build some cabins, a lot of nudity, good music, a lot of doors. The Doors? The Doors. That's what we had on tonight, L.A. Woman. What a phenomenal album. It's a great album. That really is a good fucking album, man. Yeah, they produce good albums in the studio. Let me tell you something. Growing up, that album irritated me to no end. My mom wouldn't listen to the whole album. She just listened to L.A. Woman over and over and over. L.A. Woman is how I learned how to speak English in a way. Oh, yeah? Because she'd play it and make me dance. For the other women in the room, like they play cards and shit, and my mom would pull out L.A. Woman. That sounds like a cult. But it wasn't a cult. It was a bunch of crazy <laughs> Cuban women playing cards and snorting blow in the in the seventies. And uh, it's crazy how when I was thirteen, I picked up the album on my own, mm. and I would play it. My mom's like, "I thought you didn't like this shit." And I go, "No, I hated it because you tell me how hot Jim Morrison was." Yeah. When you're fucking five, you don't want to hear about a hot guy. And my mom would say, someday I'm going to meet Jim Morrison and just eat him. In yeah. Spanish, she would say, me lo walk on me, compadre. And I would go, what the fuck are you talking about? Wow. My, you know, Cuban women loved Steve McQueen and Jim Morrison. They loved Rock Hudson until they found out he was gay. Yeah. Not eat in 85. They knew in the 60s Rock was gay. In the 50s, when he would go to Cuba, that's where he would go to escape, to be gay. Because you could be gay in Cuba? In the 50s, you were a, a celebrity. So I could bring Joe Fag as my assistant, Yeah. get two rooms, but he's not there to sleep in that room. Uh-huh. He's over in the room with me, rubbing my fucking fungi toenail and sucking my toe <laughs> sucking and sucking it. my balls. and You know what I'm saying? His tongue would be my bidet. Yeah, yeah, and he's you know making eye contact. Yeah, he has to. You know, that's how Rock Hudson, I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to always tell me that, that Rock Hudson was gay. Yeah. And I would go, fucking how do you know that? And when I got older, like two years before she died, she goes, how do I know? I'm going to tell you. Whenever Rock Hudson came to town, it was a big deal. So I was a young girl. We'd all go down there and wait for him. He would stay locked up with the guy all weekend. Who would not Who would go to Cuba and not go out? Yeah. That's why you went to Cuba, to see the fucking dancing and the Spanish women and the fucking mulattas dancing and right. fucking Benny Murray singing and you gamble. He wouldn't leave the fucking hotel room. Yeah. And I would look at my mom and go, you know what? You're fucking crazy. You're crazy. She dies six years later. He's got AIDS. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking lady was telling me the truth. Yeah. Because when they were little girls, it was like when Michael Jackson went to London and hung his kid outside the window. There was 2,000 people waiting. Same thing. It's fucking Rock Hudson. You're a Cuban girl. You're fucking 12, 13 years old. And Rock Hudson, the biggest fucking star in American películas, is coming to fucking Cuba. What's Cuba? The size of Bayonne. Yeah. Everybody knows if you're coming. Once you land at the airport, you know, Sinatra's in town. You knew. Yeah. So you went down there. That's what happened to the Bay of Pigs. You guys figured it out. <coughs> Who the fuck coming. knows? Yeah. What's up, Lee? How you feeling, dog? I'm feeling. We good. went to Legal Seafood like eighteen times. Oh, uh, you know what? I was going. I want to thank Legal Seafoods for fucking taking good care of me. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, that was actually one of my favorite parts. Not just Legal Seafoods. Bill, the the bartender. I met like I met. I'm not even a drinker, but I used. My dad always used to take me to the bar. We always used to eat at this bar, sushi bar, any bar. And I miss guys like Bill. Who just like have like a regular conversation? We 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 eat up bars a lot. Bro, he came to our table when we didn't sit at the bar. Like he became our friend. I met some great people in Boston. The the star of my world was the, the hotel manager Margaret, the restaurant manager. Yeah, she was as beautiful as she was smart and fucking. She was twenty four years old. She started there as a bus girl. Boston accent. Yeah, dirty girl. Yeah. Dirty Irish girl, but beautiful boyfriend, you know, just set. One of those girls that you look at and she'll be married in three years. Mm -hmm. We just spoke about the internet. And her other business was the internet. That's what she really wanted. That's what she went to college for. She was trying to sell products on there. And we just spoke about that. But both conversations left me fucking like, wow, you know, finally you meet somebody who's dynamite. Then the bar, Bill. From the fucking first day I got there, my name is Bill. Who fucking introduces himself anymore? 
Oh, you mean he was behind the bar? He was behind the bar. Right. And he came right over, gave me a menu, and put his hand up. Fucking guy's what? 6'4", 265, hands that'll fucking crush your head. Bald, old. Yeah. You know, he don't need much. All he needs is one good fucking shot to your head. And you're hearing, <laughs> you're hearing fucking a Boston Red Sox game. And it's fucking January. And you got like, really? at the plate is Big Poppy. <laughs> And he came over, and I said to him, what, what do you think? And he goes, try this, 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 this. You know, and I tried one of the things he recommended. I drank iced teas. That was the fir- I got off the plane and went right to legal seafood. Mm-hmm. You know me. I don't fuck around. Right. You got to get, get in as many meals as you can. You got to get the meals. I rolled the joint and fucking, uh, you take a walk. I found the place to smoke. I smoked backwards. Then I realized they didn't give a fuck because it was legal. Yeah. <sighs> and then I walked into legal seafood, reeking of marijuana, reeking. Went right to the bar, no hello to the hostess, nothing. And I blasted out something. I forget what I ate the first day. Oh, mussels. I had mussels and clam chowder. Just Welcome by to... yourself, sitting at the bar. Solo, like a doctor. I came yeah. out of this motherfucker solo. I went down, I went upstairs, 10 o'clock. I asked Bill, Bill, what time you close? He goes, 11. I'll see you around 10. I took a shower, I tried to write some jokes, I watched some TV, 10 o'clock, another joint. Mm-hmm. Pew, right downstairs. He goes, you came back. I got back that night. I ate clams on a half shell like a doctor. Wow. And crab cake with a salad. The next day, I had breakfast at the hotel. Ah, men's amort. But for lunch, you know where I was going to be. Legal, Legal seafood. seafood. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And I think we went there for late dinner. Yeah, absolutely. We Justin. went there after the fucking will turn no like shit. doctors. Come on. That place isn't cheap either. No, no. But it's, listen, man. I didn't get sick. I could trust them. Mm -hmm. The day I went and met Lee and his mom for lunch, which made my fucking whole weekend. Had you met her before? Never. What was she like? I didn't know what to expect. I expected something completely different than what I met. Yeah. First of all, just the fact that my mom was dead 30-something years last week. Just the fact that he let me meet his mom, knowing how crazy he meant the world to me. Yeah. I was expecting an attorney. I was expecting a woman with the temperament, uh, forgive the English, of a Jewish attorney. Yeah. Single divorced 60s she's already seen it all yeah you know what I'm saying that's what I expected I ended up sitting next to uh, the sweetest woman I've met in years really and I could tell she was lonely I could tell she wants Lee back so now I'm guilty Mm -hmm. because you and I if my mom was alive I'd live around the corner I'd be rubbing her feet and breaking her balls and making me cook Right or wrong. Right. If I had a chance to be with my mother again, I would dump my girlfriend. <laughs> Not worth the aggravation. I'd throw my mom eight. What's the what's the mortgage here, mom? Twelve, here's nine. Let me live downstairs like a doctor. Which means you know what a doctor means, Doug? <laughs> means when you wake up, you know what you wake up to? <laughs> mom with bacon, yeah. two eggs, toast, just how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Drink the coffee, Greg, before it gets cold. And know? she's standing there with the pot. Right waiting, there, waiting right there. Like at the, as you're pissing, and she's telling you about the weather and what happened and what, what avenue to take because it's busy and Mr. Mailman got cancer. <laughs> That's what a what mom app? does. You don't need any you apps when you got women. a mom. You can jerk off in the bathroom. Nobody <laughs> bothers you. She's just happy you're there. Yeah. At that age, that gets to a point with mom and dad where they don't give a fuck. They're just happy that you're there mm-hmm. and you're having a great time. You don't touch. You know what? You can't bring women there, and you can't disrespect them and get high in the yeah. house. You right. gotta give them that. Who gives a fuck? I'll take a walk. How mm-hmm. old am I? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But think about if I because I haven't had a mom in thirty years. Mm. So when Lee goes, yeah, she's. Long. Why are you fucking kidding me, Lee? All these assholes <laughs> paying rent. How long you been gone? Uh, well, I was, I've been here almost at six, and then I was gone for four of college, so pretty much ten. Yeah. Yeah, you're ready to head back home. You know what I'm saying, Ma, what's the mortgage here? What, mm. what do you need a month to make you happy? <laughs> here you go. Yeah. I'm taking the basement over. I'm redoing the basement, a disco ball. <laughs> they don't give a fuck, Jack. When you walk in at 501, they're at the door with dinner, slippers, Yeah. ready for you, at attention, again, with all the details. And there's always something in the fridge. I fucking know hard-boiled going. eggs. Yeah. Always. A homemade a cake. Salad, yeah, a homemade cake. cake. Yeah. There's a homemade cake. That, where are you going to go? You put weights downstairs, right? <laughs> a punching bag. <laughs> you get elliptical. You don't go nowhere. Right. You go out and get a job just minimally. 
Yeah. That's it. Come on, what do we need here to make it happen? <laughs> so what? I got my dick sucked in the massage parlor <laughs> once a week. I got the fungi nail. <laughs> <laughs> What's my nut? Fifteen hundred. I work at the deli just to live at home. <laughs> You're spending half your paycheck on a blowjob. Yeah, like who cares? Right when you live with mom, jack. if you live with mom, you're a widow. Yeah, you know you go somewhere to get your dick sucked yeah. and your balls licked. <laughs> right. You go somewhere filthy <laughs> because that's a balance out living with mom. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who lives with mom has like a girlfriend, but they do something filthy. Yeah, because that makes you feel normal. Where you been, Greg? Ma, I can't tell you. Nah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been somewhere you don't want to know. Uh, and the thought of living with my mom, like, it wasn't her, but I just, I, I, I wanted to get out at 18. And now, I don't, I, I don't want to live with her, but I kind of, I'm going to live with her in like 20 minutes. So, I'll tell you what, three months ain't bad with mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could, I could do three months, yeah, if I had to. You tell the girlfriend you're getting your head together, not to call for three, listen, don't call <laughs> for three months, I'm getting my head together. <laughs> <laughs> I got somebody taking care yeah. of me, what do I need yeah. you for? You come back, your toenails are clipped, you're oh. fucking smiling. Oh, they put they rub apple cider on your toe and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they put that exorcist acid on your toenail. They still so long. Moms will do anything. They'll pop the pimples on your back, oh, right? Oh, fuck They'll yeah. do anything. Mom, I got a blackhead right yeah. under my nutsack. Yeah. They put the glasses on with the light over it and shit. Don't get that blackhead. <laughs> I used to jerk off on my T-shirts, oh. and I thought years later about how, you know how they were all clumped together? You ever come on a T-shirt, and it just all sticks to itself? When I was younger, anyway. And then I think about uh, my mom would have to see that shit, and she'd wash it, you know? Think about what moms do for you. No, but I see, that's where you trick them. You got to blow your nose in them. So now they don't really know. It's a, I blow my nose and everything. Underwear, dirty socks. Yeah, yeah. But that wouldn't be a good my excuse wife. for my mom. My mom no. like, why are you blowing your nose in your shirts? Because I just it's right here and I don't want to fucking... Yeah. How many trees can we kill? <laughs> how many trees can we kill? Have you thought about trees, Mom? You're the one that's up here the other day, vote for Clinton. Now you don't give a fuck about trees. <laughs> Jerking off is green. You got to keep it green. I don't know. I used to jerk off on something. When I was disgusting, I'd jerk off on a shirt and put it on. Like, I'm one of those. Yeah. You unfold that motherfucker. Yeah. Like the, <laughs> that starch. Looks like a tie dye. Icky. It looks like somebody <laughs> shot it with something hard, like wait, wait, candle wait. wax. You need to clarify what you just said. It sounds like you just like laid your shirt out on your bed, and jerked it off on it. No, and no. Put sometimes, it on. no. See, I told, I told you I'm uncircumcised. So I always got a three minute pause. Because I just ho hold on to the top of the turtleneck. Why? And, and it blows up like a snake from the fucking cum. And that gives me like a... This <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you didn't know that, Doug? <laughs> you didn't know that? No. I'm uncircumcised. So when I feel myself, when I whack off by myself, yeah. I just hold on to the top. And it gives me... Like I sit there for a minute or two and think what I want to do. I look around. <laughs> I, it fills up like a fucking, like a back of a cobra. Like, it fills up. And I go to the toilet and just pull the skin back, and it comes out like a fucking burp. Like a boop. It just comes out, this whole one whole thing. I take toilet paper. I, I wipe off the helmet. I take a quick piss, and it's over. That's it. Nobody gets their feelings hurt. And there's no witnesses. He's on his way to the Hudson well, you River. Got a, you got a name for that move? No, it's called the Joey Diaz. I just, just hold Joey on to Diaz. the top, and it swells Squeeze up. I hold it. on to the uncircumcised yeah. meat. And it swells up. Like it's choking. I've held it for five, six minutes sometimes. Why? Why not just let it go? Because what, what, and do what? Stain something? I leave witnesses? So you, you can enjoy it, hold it on to it? I don't enjoy it, but I got to come on something. I got to <laughs> bend over and get a sock. I can just hold it in two minutes. Once fucking I find out whether Lenny Briscoe's fired or not, I can go over and unleash the fucking dragon juice. <laughs> This is a great podcast on a Monday night. This is a great way to start your week. I'm sorry about it. went to this topic. I thought you knew. I said it on the road. I had no podcast idea. I never ago. heard that before. Oh, I've been doing that since day one. Fuck. It gives you like a little time. Sometimes you just whack off and you come wherever you want. I think there's some Karma Sutra thing about grabbing the base or like tantric. Is that tantric when you grab the base? I watched. Listen. But it's before you come and it stops you from coming. Years ago when I used to do blow, one of those channels used to have late night two Indians fucking. Yeah. Like a bunch of Indian women fucking. They were hot. Like but Middle they, Eastern Indian? Yeah, like the ones in 7-Eleven. But they were doing uh, they, <laughs> they were doing sex acts and they, it was called Kama Sutra. Yeah. That was the name of the show. I don't know. This uh, Felicia used to date a guy that was into Kama Sutra and she said he'd fucking never come. 
Yeah. That he do that one night she came eighteen times. He didn't come one time. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that stuff. That sounds like you're a caddy. You're yeah. not playing. Yeah, like you can't come. But I see a lot of Hindus. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? It don't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kama Sutra don't work. I see a lot of Hindus. You know what I'm saying? I think the Kama Sutra is for making more Hindus. No, because you're not supposed to come. Yeah, you're not supposed to come. I get Listen, I don't know. Don't quote me on this. I don't know. I'm smoking dope and eating edibles. What the fuck do I know? I'm just a fat fuck who's uninformed. It's not like I'm sitting here with a computer googling fucking Hindus and uh, Kama Sutra. It's good to see you, dog. It's Always a pleasure you. to see you, man. Yeah, you came in looking like I stole your lunchbox. I know. I'm like, what the fuck? It's over. That's it. Yeah. That, 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 you know, uh, we're living in weird times. If mm-hmm. you haven't opened your eyes, the last 10 years has been rough on a lot of people. We were just talking about the film industry. Dog, if I was still shooting shit, look, I got a call the other day for a friend. I forget what the fuck the kid's name is. I did a shitty movie with him once, and he blew up. Mm. This dude blew the fuck up. He did those Clint Eastwood movies. And I, I just went to see the one about the pilot, Sully. Yeah. And he had a three minute role in that. I don't give a fuck if it was three minutes or not. I wasn't on that fucking movie, right. you know? So I get a call Friday. He wants me to do his uh, web series, you know? And I go, okay, I would, I'm fucking out of it. Lou Lombardi and him. Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah. Lou Lombardi was the guy who played the cop to Big Pussy and the Sopranos that always tormented oh, him. Oh, yeah, of course. Great guy. Great fucking guy. I know him from auditions. He used to come to the comedy store. It'd be great, but it's a digital sag. Yeah. It pays a yardstick. Yeah, right. Seriously. Yeah. You do know this. I'm not joking. No shit. A hundred dollars a day. Really? I'd love to do it, but I'd have to cancel the park. No, no, no. I'm figuring it's a yardstick. What's digital? Seven minutes? You do a take, another take, yeah. and you go home. Yeah. Two two eleven. Damn. For how many days? Just one. For a hundred bucks? A yardstick. You know, we were talking about acting, how it used to affect our income. I barely make level two insurance, brother. Mm, right. And three quarters of it, to be honest with you, is on residuals. Mm-hmm. And a half of that is the longest yard in Spider-Man 2. The longest yard has been keeping me in pork chops. It is the longest yard. For a, yeah, it's yeah. the longest yard. It's stretched out. Fuck. And they play it. No football season, football season, Thanksgiving, 8 o'clock on CBS. I just got that check two weeks ago. Like, what the fuck is this shit? Nice. Like, you know, you sit there. That's what's keeping me in pork chops. But the old... See, it wasn't... I never made money acting like people spoke about. Like, I always got the shit under the stick. I'm not complaining. But I tell you where my forte was. When I first got here, I got into co-stars. And one day, somebody made a mistake and paid me the wrong rate. And that became my rate. Hmm. So I would go in for every co-star in the beginning, and they would shit their pants. But I was so badass in the auditions that they'd have to fucking give it to me. Yeah. I learned that I got to go in there, and that's my value now. I got to go in there. Like, I, I, my guest star role number wasn't good. At that time, I wasn't booking guest stars. I had never booked a guest star. Mm-hmm. But that disappeared, Lisa, I had. Those days disappeared. In those days, I'd get calls from Greg going, Joey, what are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Uh, my friend's got a show on CBS. They're looking for a garbage man. I told him about you. It's co-star, but they're going to pay you uh, 1600 for the fucking day. $1,600? i am getting $15 spots at the store. Mm. That's not bad. I love when people in this industry call, and they, they're apologizing about amazing rates. I remember I, I, I got a call... Someone apologized and they wanted to pay me twelve hundred a week, and I was making eight seventy five. And I was like, "Oh, I think I'll be able to." They're like, "Will you be able to uh, handle twelve hundred a week? Is that okay?" I'm like, "I think I'll be able to manage." Was that Joey Diaz talking to you? No, it was. Uh, I was going to work for Hell's Kitchen. Mm. It was just amazing how that salary killed me. I was getting ten of those. I was getting twelve of those. One a month. All I had to do was go to Warner Brothers or go to Sony. And half of them I was auditioning for. You know where I was booking shit? Actors Access. What's that? Backpage? Actors, Actors Access is a fucking computer page that you go to. You set up a page. You put a headshot. But the industry has to go through that. So if somebody wants to see 
Greg Fitzsimmons today. You have to have a reel on Actors Access, and then they'll email that reel with the fucking thing. Okay. So I set up an account early on. Somebody goes, go to Actors Access. First thing I booked was a film that flew me to Jamaica. I got fired, but they had to pay me a year later. <laughs> yeah, I got fired. It took a year to get the Jamaicans to pay you? No. SAG is a motherfucker. See, if you owe me 1500 SAG wants 4800 mm. Late fees, movie penalties, blah, 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 blah. So on paper, all I wanted was 2200 bucks. That's all I wanted. I wanted the, what I was supposed to get. The misunderstanding was not on me. Mm. It was clear from SAG. It was them. As soon as you get on a fucking set, as soon as you touch base in the foreign fucking land, they're supposed to give you per diem, the script, your own hotel room. They wanted me to share a hotel room with the cameraman. Mm -hmm. They never had a script. Wow. And they said you have to wait like a week for per diem. <clears throat> what are you fucking talking about? There's a fucking, wait, there's a fucking waiter at the restaurant that's got a tree of weed for me. <laughs> for a hundred, I swear to God. Yeah. Guy showed up to my room and he had the stem of a fucking tree. Holy shit. Lee, it was like this. With buds going all the way fucking down it, from, just on a fucking stem. Shit. That yeah. was from the waiter? From the waiter. As soon as I got there, I went to the restaurant. I started talking to him. He came back out, and it was in his pocket. He stuck it in there like a knife. Are you fucking kidding me? And these people didn't have it. I complained. They got pissed off. They said, you can take the next plane out tomorrow. I said, fine. And I left. And then I came back, filed the fucking motion. Mm-hmm. And then a year later, the guy called me. The story was, the guy owned a strip club. And he had a stripper he was in love with. But for her to move in, he had to pay for her first movie. So he went in his pocket and put $300,000 down, put another $150,000 bond through SAG. Damn. Oh, yeah, he was in love with this Just woman. to get her to move in. <clears throat> Just to get her to love him. Like, during the shoot, there was drama with him and her. He wanted her to stay in the room. Oh, she yeah? wouldn't yeah, oh she was holding on to a deal. So he got two movie stars to do the role. You ready? George Jefferson and the black girl from Baywatch. Yeah? Those were her his leading stars that were gonna take this to the cinema <laughs> and they were gonna win Cannes Award. I'm sitting there going, Oh, this is a bunch of bullshit. George Jefferson. Yeah, and he hired him and some waiter from the strip club to write the script. I saw the first 10 pages, like the, what I was supposed to read. Yeah. Shit was misspelled. It was it was just a horror <laughs> show, and it was my fault for being a fucking gabon, you know? But then... What, does a job, you know? You got to go do a job. But then I booked Cold Case. When Cold Case first came on, mm. first fucking came on. I'm on the Cold Case first. I showed Julie how big I was. When it first came on, I clicked on to one. You pay $2 per submission. It came up... It's the breakdowns without the big stuff. Yeah. They hold out the big stuff and they give you a lot more non-union stuff if you're starting out. Uh -huh. But the early shows, the first season, they don't know what they're looking for. So they go on Actors Access. Bam, I nailed the Cold Case dog. Mm. And Cold Case was great the first season. I came on in February after I picked up momentum. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? Joey Bananas? <laughs> so then that gets added to your resume on the, uh, on the website. So what's they can constantly from? see uh, what's it called with that you IMDb. No, the one that you uh, the the casting agents look at. Mm -hmm. They so that'll have your resume on it, contact info, all that shit. All that shit's on there. When you sign with a good theatrical agent, they take like they fucking beat you up about that because they know that's where the business is now. Mm. It's not about auditions anymore. It's about me sending your reel. They just call up now and says, "Can you see what Greg Fitzsimmons availability is?" From November 25th to December 8th. Mm. Yep, he's available. Okay, can you send over his reel and, and resume and a headshot? Yep, okay, thank you. And then your agent will call you and say, hey, you just got pinned for those dates. Then they'll call you like, you forgot about it. Mm -hmm. You've completely forgotten about it. Then they'll call you and they go, hey, I just want to inform you we had a quiet casting call. You're not, you're not on hold anymore. I figured that by now. You know what I'm saying? It's been a month and a half. I'm not on hold no more. Well, fucking oop de doop <laughs> Let me just kick you while you're down. Yeah. yeah. You don't even realize you're down. It's uh, it's it's really changed. The, the the the. Thank God for podcasts and thank God yeah. for 
that's giving people forums and stuff like that, you know? Well, they got to start making small movies again, you know? There's got to be, like, movies that are made. It's so much cheaper now with digital. They can actually afford to pay people and do these little movies. Um, but it doesn't. the Internet stuff doesn't add up. You'll never make your benefits if it's just web series. You got to get on network TV. Even cable, a lot of that stuff doesn't pay. I didn't know. I, I, who the fuck knows anymore? Who mm. the fuck knows? I know that like the games are on strike, aren't they? Mm. The voiceover games, all those games. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, those people. The are video on game VO yeah. guys. The VO guys. Somebody's on fucking strike. Yeah, the animated people were on strike for a minute. It's been the the problem is is that you've got the actors union, the writers guild, and the directors guild all lined up with the studios, and they renew at different di- different years. So they'll do a three-year contract or a five-year contract with the Writers Guild. The following year, they re-up with SAG. The following year, they re-up. And that way, the three unions can't come together and, and you know have a front. They split us up. So we have no power individually. we got to all get together in one union. Huh. You should put that all together. You should get Lee Syatt and start a movement. <laughs> Fucking, what do you uh, think, Lee? I don't know. I, uh, I I like it, but it's weird. It's weird to think like think about because honestly, I'm pretty high, and I didn't hear what you to uh, the union you said. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about how like I used to be an editor, and like to hear like about like all the money like actors and stuff make doing like short commercials. It's like it. I can understand why people are going on strike. Like all of those people when when there's people making a lot of money. Like people at the top of these things are making. Tons Listen, of money. bro. Ten years ago, for three or four years in a row, Ari Shafir not did great doing commercials. He fucking destroyed them. Oh, did he? Oh, he had like three campaigns early on that were killers. See, even the campaigns changed. Yeah. When you would walk into a room, it would say March third through March eighteenth. That meant you worked five days. Mm-hmm. What did that mean? That, yeah, so what? They were going to shoot Lee's commercial for a day. You sat there and took a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Now it says that, but when you get the call, it's for one afternoon. Like, they don't even give you the the whole day and then some overtime. Mm-hmm. Let me go overtime. Yeah. Listen, on, take your time. Go take pictures. Go do something. Make believe you're a director. Talk about your fucking <laughs> Paris festival. Whatever. You almost got shot. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever the fuck happened yeah. to you. <laughs> you got drunk with John Travolta. We get it. Tell the story again. Oh my god, it's uh, it's such a different fucking world. I was talking to a friend of mine, Greg Powers, today, and we were talking about staying grounded. You know how mm. things have changed in your world. Uh, like the shit I would do twenty years ago, I was never one of those guys that went to premieres and snuck into parties. I was always, no, no, no. I was always a no-no where I came from. The only stuff that I ever fucked with was the stuff that I pertained to. By the way, there's a movie coming out this week with Warren Beatty. You guys see the commercial for it? No. He plays plays that fucking dude. Oh, right. I'm in that movie. No shit. I did a day in that movie. What's it called? Who the fuck knows? (laughs) (laughs) They just sent me an email maybe a month ago. Invite me to the screening. I shot this two fucking years ago, one day. Wow. You're not going to even see me. I know you're not going to see me. I guarantee they cut me because I'm not even on the IMDb. Unless they listed me as mob guys. Rules Mm -hmm. don't apply? Rules don't apply. I guarantee they cut my fucking So you're not going to the party? It was eight weeks ago, four weeks ago. Oh, you didn't go? They emailed me on a Monday for Thursday, and I was leaving Thursday. Yeah. I was leaving town Thursday. So you would have gone. Why not? As long as you don't do it all the time. I mean, going to stuff like that once in a while is kind of fun. What if you, you ever walk into a place and you're walking around like a fucking retard and everybody's talking? See, at those well, you got to bring somebody. Who are you going to bring? Just bring a friend. Well, what bring friend Lee. Am I you got bring? Lee Sayak. Can you, me and him Phone walk into away. a place? You down? You got nine one one on hold. <laughs> You got 911 at home, me and Lee walk into place. Me and Lee are perfect to rob that joint. Lee whips out a machine gun from that fucking jacket of his, 
And I start yelling, freeze. Are you fucking kidding me? We walk in, a Cuban and a Jew. You could feel the pressure. You know what I'm saying? We wrap around you like my fingers around that turtleneck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I ain't letting go. I'm not coming on my leg. I ain't no fool. <laughs> I gotta see a movie. I want. I want a fan to make a movie poster of that that image. No, 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 no. That image should not be even seen. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. What do you got going on? What else is happening in your life? How are the children? How's the wife? Wife's good. The She's road. The road. You, where are you at New Year's Eve? Anywhere? Cobb's in San Francisco. Are you really? Yeah. You have balls of steel. Who's know. with you? I don't know. Um couple other people. Oh, yeah. It's one of those shows. Yeah. 15 minutes? 15, 20 minutes, twice. Two shows. Done. That's a great fucking show. That's a good gig, huh? That's a great gig, man. And I, bring the family up. I think we'll drive up the coast. for. We got the whole holiday off. Drive up to San Francisco. Run around Golden Gate Park. Fucking eat some dim sum. Wake up late. Be great. Not a bad idea for New Year's. The roads are empty. You can't flirt with the waitresses, though. You know, if you get your wife there, that's a you got to remember. Well, why is your wife going to come? She's happy at the hotel. They got pay per view. <laughs> they got room <laughs> service. Everybody's right. happy. What the are you kids are go? entertaining. Yeah, bring you know? some board games. Listen, my wife is great. I don't want my wife at a comedy show. Yeah. For me to do my thing, I can't have my wife in the corner. You know why do you think I don't perform at home? At home, hmm. I could perform. A mile from where I'm from, bananas in uh, Jersey. Yeah, that's my whole fucking tribe would come down there. I don't want them hearing what comes out of my mouth now. Oh yeah, seriously. So you have like a radius that you won't perform. If they really want to see me, they gotta drive. Yeah, I go to uh, I go to uh, Stress Factory. Yeah, which will be an hour away, and to really throw them off, I go into the city, even though. I'm from North Bergen, which is right fucking nine minutes from New York City. Yeah. We're Hudson County. I know for them going into the city is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Well, that's like talking about Southie before. There's people that live in Southie that don't go to downtown Boston. They don't go to any other part of Boston. They just live Now, how like big is town. Southie? It's like a uh, couple square miles. And how far from that is where we stayed this weekend, Lee? You were right there. Yeah, we stayed right next to the Wilbur, pretty much. Oh, oh, not far. Not far. How far? Ten minute drive. I walk through there. I get mugged. No. I walk through there. Can I cop an eight ball? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, there's all Irish bars on the corners. You go into those places, they'll they'll spot you. Somebody knows somebody. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah, you can have a good time there. And uh but the bars close early. What time? Two. Two o'clock, yeah. And you then and then everyone shit. spills into the streets, and it's all these drunken Boston guys, and they all just start fighting. I was never... Go ahead, Lee, I'm And so it's sorry. not even two. Most of it's 1245. Mm. When That's I was, the last call, 1245. Was, when I was there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Right. And I, it's... it's cr- So, yeah, that's it's crazy. And something you can pay, but I think it's like millions of dollars to extend it to 145. Let's get something straight. I was never Captain fucking Midnight. There was a time where I was forced to be Captain Midnight because I really had no home. Hmm. So what was I going to go home for? To sleep and think about missing my parents and shit like that? I got to stay out. Yeah. I got to stay out. It was so funny. When I went home with my family, I took them to Rudy's, where I've been eating since I was 17. Where's Rudy's? Rudy's in Cliffside, Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Okay. We used to walk three miles on Monday Night Football in the dead of the winter, me and this dude named Tommy Russo. And we'd go in there. We were 16 and a half, and they'd serve us. Heineken on tap with uh, calamari with medium sauce. What are you, fucking <laughs> nuts? We'd be in there living like fucking Johnny LaBamba, that motherfucker. We'd make believe we had pinky rings, even though we didn't and shit. I swear to God, in those days, it was like 30 bucks, 20 bucks, and we had it. Yeah. And I've been going, every time I go home, I hit Rudy's. It's still there. Still there. I won't even eat calamari nowhere else. Like, I got pictures of it on my phone. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And I mean, Pete, if you go there, there's two competitors. It's that one that used to be a place called Patsy's. Patsy's finally went under, 
But all those years, I stayed loyal to fucking Rudy's. One time, I disrespected Rudy's. <laughs> I went to Patsy's because Mikey Batoli was taking me out to lunch, and he kept telling me I had to go, I had to go, yeah. I had to go. But the whole time, I couldn't even. That's how much I respect. It's like, it's like my passion for Chinese restaurants. I have such a respect for Chan's that I had to boycott California Chinese food. Really? Like I finally, I couldn't do it anymore. Because every time I'd go home, I'd realize how bad the food I was eating here. Fucko here, my main man, came up to me this week like a man, and he said he went to eat, and he realized the same thing. You forget, and you order it, and you order it, and one day you go, what the fuck am I eating? This ain't beef and oyster sauce. This is beef and soy sauce with onions and yeah. fucking rice. I'm getting filled up on fucking rice and a wonton that tastes like dick. You bite into a dim sum or a dumpling, and it's a ball. What do you think is in that ball? You think that's real meat? That's what they don't use on the fucking, you know what I'm saying? Right, that's right. Those it's always a little rubbery. That's rub. It's a, but they mix it all together. They put the eyeball yep. with the fucking legs. Mm -hmm. They throw a little bit of pork balls in there it's and, a, a, and a pig's ears and yeah. a pig's tail. And it tastes kind of, that's what gives it the flavor yeah. is the pig. But everything else you're eating, they fucking grind down the shrimp. The tails, that's what you're eating in there. They give it that fishy flavor and shit. People are like, oh, my God, I yeah, can taste yeah, the fish. That's yeah. a fucking shrimp snail. <laughs> you fucking moron. <laughs> but yeah, that's some mystery meat. The dumpling meat. <clears throat> there was a Chinese restaurant I went to in Boulder. I loved them. I adored them. They, they, they really saved my life. I could talk all this shit about. First of all, I loved them. I loved them so much, I went to work for them. Like, I called them one day, and I had my daughter with me at the time. <coughs> I was a fucking bum, man. You know? And they came, to, and I was going to pull a quick one on them. I was going to uh, make them come and say I couldn't find my wallet. And I went out there, and I go, you know, I called you, and now I realize I can't find my wallet. And I go, take the food. Call me when you find your wallet. My heart broke. That night I went, I broke the money. And after that, we just became friends. The guy goes, listen. You ever have a problem? You could put it on the tab. Your family. I was like, really? Well, I started putting it on the tab. I get a hundred dollars. I pay him. Uh -huh. One day I went in there. Like, we need a delivery driver. <laughs> Uncle Joey's here. Never fear. <laughs> I was selling coke too at the same time. So I was delivering coke and Chinese food. If you wanted coke, you had to buy a pint of rice, something, an egg roll, something, shrimp foo young. <laughs> Oh, my oh God. that's hilarious. Boulder was great. <laughs> Boulder was really great. Yeah, fucking eight ball. I've had a great fucking time. I really had. Like, yeah. I'm trying to write this book, and as I'm writing it, Greg, it's so weird that reading the shit the next morning makes me sad, but at the same time, it takes me to a certain time period mm -hmm. that made me laugh, even though I had that sadness, which is kind of hard to explain. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, Jesus. How long have you been writing for? 18 fucking years. I'm on chapter one and a half. <laughs> 18 years. I'm on one and a half. Come I, on, man. That shit's got to get out there. I read on writing 18 times. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You do your 20 minutes every morning? Every fucking morning. I do a little more. and Sometimes I read it the next morning and I realize I got to tone the reefer down or do more CBD oil. I gotta do something to get focused. <laughs> I'm talking about my life, and also I'm talking about the circus and Barnum and Bailey Circus and fucking the lap leopards. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Joey Diaz? I gotta start from scratch and move shit around. You need an editor. I need a lot of things, dog. And that is the worst thing. Uh, well, that is the worst, uh, the, the least of my fucking nightmares, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you something. How old were you when you got it together, Greg? Lee and I had a great conversation this weekend, and it's been haunting him, and it's been haunting me because I, it started to make me think of what age finally something hits you and says, well, how long am I going to fucking be mugging people? I think, uh, well, I was never, obviously like you, I had a, I had some drinking problem and I stopped that, but... It wasn't until my father died that just fucking snapped me into it. Then all of a sudden, I just I just took stuff a little bit more seriously, but I also had more fun at the same time. How old were you? Twenty three. That's when it all came together. Twenty four. Yeah. You knew what you wanted to do after that. 
I want to be a comedian. I want to be a writer and a comedian. And uh, so, in a way, it took a tragedy to. I think so. You know, because I think that I had a lot of I wanted to impress my father and get his acceptance, and once that was gone, it sort of let me go after it on my own terms more. Like I always felt like I was still looking for his approval. I'm fucking twenty three years old doing stand up. I'm a feature act. You know, not making a lot of money, but paying the rent. He knew I was a working comic. But uh, but when he'd come out to see me, I would still, like, I'd get tight and I'd walk off feeling like a fucking child, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't want family to see me doing stand-up. Mm. It would fucking shock me. But no, nah, I was just talking to Lee. And I was about 32. But it was a time when I had to be brutally honest with myself. Yeah. Like, I was really... Uh, I was just spinning my wheels. I was doing stand-up, which was giving me a little hope, but not enough hope. But in the back of my mind, there was hope. But I was just spinning my fucking wheels, and I had to do like an inventory, and I always believe in the Abe Lincoln clothes, where you, you put your benefits and your, you know, like in your uh, your benefits, and uh, what's the opposite of benefits? Deficits. Oh, cons. Excuse me? Pros and cons? The pros and cons, or yeah. whatever. And boy, there was no pros. It was like two pros compared to 80 cons. Yeah. You know? And you got to be a brutal And you were 33? I was about 32, man. Okay. And my world came on my shoulders. I had already been married, had a kid, done time. And I had, I was, listen, man, you know, I wake up and thank the Lord every day because from 20 to 30, I have no idea. Hmm. I have no idea how that even happened. You know, one day you're just 30 fucking two, and you got 32 fucking problems, and the bitch ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 32 sounds about right. That's, that's you, you've what, gone far enough down that when you make a change, it's going to stick. Well, at 32, I had done it all. Yeah. That's it. I had all, I could at 32, I could already written a book. Plain and simple. That was my biggest mistake, not sitting down right there. Because at 32, that was a fucking book already. Mm. That was a tremendous book already. Then 32, by the fucking mercy of God, I got on stage. And that changed me. That was like fucking it. Like that. That was like a punch to the fucking mouth. But then I even went more rock bottom maybe four or five years after that. But I was still holding on to comedy, and I was still going out every night and doing comedy, regardless of what was going on or how I was feeling. But then I had to make a choice, and I had to write some shit down. And you know what? In hindsight, I made the right choice. I made the right decision. I went for it, and you and I are having a conversation 20 years later. Yeah. I can't believe I left Boulder 20 fucking 21 years ago, and it went quick, man. Mm. It went. When did you leave Boston? 90. Well, I went from Boston to New York in, in 93, and then I came out here in like 99. Jesus, guys. Yeah. Me and Rogan, we figured the other day, we started fucking 28 years ago or something. Same time, same place, and uh, very different paths. You know, he got he got into sitcoms really fast. I mean, I remember when, when, when Joe was coming up in Boston... He was like the guy other comics were afraid of. Like all the the seasoned headliners, they didn't want to go on after him anymore. So all of a sudden, he went from opening to headlining without ever being a feature. He just went straight to it. And, uh, you know, he, he just uh, stuck with it. And, you know, that was the same, same time that you started comedy was probably when I... That was a turning point. That my dad died, and I and I had just started comedy a couple years before it. And now it's about getting getting free again, you know, with the kids. The kids that would keep you grounded, correct? Yeah, right. It's uh, I like what's going on right now. You know, as I was leaving, now we were watching uh, World News tonight, as we do as a family. She has this little pad, and it's her pooter. Pooter? Her computer. Uh-huh. You know? Uh, and she was sitting, like, on my lap, and my wife was on the couch, and we were watching fucking World News Tonight. The black lady died, and 
Yeah. And the guitarist died, Leon Russell, right. the piano player. And uh, I look at Mercy, I go, Mercy, I got to leave, you know. I got to go to work. And she gives me a kiss. And as I'm walking out the door, she, I said to my wife, I love you. And all of a sudden I hear her little voice going, I love you, Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You're like, where the fuck do I want to go? Yeah. What disco do I want to go to? What club and <laughs> be VIP talking to some assholes? What coffee shop? I, I don't want to leave here to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, what the fuck am I thinking? Yeah, right. That's why when sometimes people ask me to, uh, you know, do their shows, some guy's got a fucking show at a coffee shop and it's got a wheel that spins and then if your name comes up that's when you go on and you're standing around like an asshole everybody get there at eight o'clock show goes till 10 they don't tell you when you're on no no no, no and you're all no. supposed to hang around back it's like i, I don't have time no, for those that shit days anymore are done. those days are done i gotta go in and out of there <laughs> you know the comedy store runs on schedule boom they wherever stay i right go on. there runs on schedule you know, nobody pops in. If they do, they're 15 minutes behind. Right. And usually you bump into somebody you enjoy talking to anyway for 15 minutes. Right, right. A comic you sure. haven't seen or something. What about Flappers? Great place. I'm going to be there this Thursday. My first time going in as the a whole headliner. Weekend? No, the just whole... one night headlining this Thursday, the 17th. I'm going to tell you how cool Barbara is. I'm in that motherfucking Valentine's Day, 9 o'clock. She's letting me roll the dice and do what the fuck I want to do. Valentine's Day. Yeah, you know, the Yoohoo Room is where, basically, I put the early footwork down for my special. Yeah. 55 people. No pressure. You do 35 people, you sold it out on a Tuesday night. Uh-huh. You charge ten five dollars You get a little workout. People that want to come see you, you, you tell people on the podcast... This is not going to be Carnegie Hall, mm -hmm. Greg Fitzsimmons. This is Greg Fitzsimmons with a notebook, just talking from the heart. Some shit you might like, some shit you don't. The last 10 minutes, I go to fucking form and close out strong. But Do some 50, dick jokes. Yeah, for 15 minutes, it's just going to be what's on the notebook. Yeah. It was a fucking great time, which I should have taped. We do have them, all of them. Lee has all the tapings. All those flappers, all those Ice House shows. Oh, you save all those Ice House shows. Yeah, on tape, not on videotape. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? I said, Lee, who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Maybe we'll put them all together and sell them for $2 and donate the money to cats or some shit like that. <laughs> I'll have to buy a cat. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's the first charity you think of is fucking cats. Why not? Like some fucking shelter that they don't kill cats. They take a lot of money. Yeah, fucking, yeah, they you got do. got 30 cats in there. You got to pay for litter. Fucking love. You got some volunteers. But how long are you going to go in there and hang out with cats? A month <laughs> and one day you go home and go, what the fuck am I doing in my life? You smoke a joint or some of that fucking shit that's going around. And all of a sudden you're sitting there putting your shoes on. They smell like cat litter. You got a rash on your face and shit. <laughs> Lee, where's Tony Bennett? You hook him up or what? You're slipping, cocksucker. Monday, November 14th. It's half over, cocksuckers. Kick it, Lee. Look at Lee, that chocolate took you over the top, didn't it? It fucking put me over the top, Jack. I don't know what it was, but yeah. Oof, I just went into a deep fucking... <clears throat> I swear to God, I just went somewhere deep into the mm -hmm. hemisphere. I was thinking about something. You went to college. Yeah. Ever? You graduated? Yeah. I almost graduated college, dog, and then I went to prison. Do you know that? That in was the, in, in, in Boulder? In the middle of all that, I was... 18 credits away and I was up there I was rocking and rolling I had good grades but 
one day the guy came to me. He goes, listen, the next semester, you got to take like an intro to sociology. And I had like a, a, a side counselor in those days. I had the, the girl I was married to, her dad, thought he was like a fucking intellectual. And he used to always tell me, don't take those sociology classes, you know. And I'm like, uh, they're making me take it. You got to take two of these fucking dummy classes, whatever you describe. We call them dummy classes. So I ended up taking intro to social and something else. Intro to social, I don't even remember what the fuck we talked about in there. But the other one was very interesting. We went in there and the guy goes, I want you to do me a favor. This is your assignment. I want you to watch Do the Right Thing and tell me what you see. I went home fucking furious. I didn't want to watch Do the Right Fucking Thing. Mm -hmm. That was the last movie I ever wanted to fucking watch in those days. Yeah. When that movie came, listen, if it wasn't a Charles Bronson movie, a Steven Seagal movie, or a De Niro movie, you were in no fucking danger. But I paid for the fucking class. I might as well do the right thing and watch do the right thing. I watched this movie, and the first time I basically peed my pants. I haven't laughed this fucking hard in five fucking years. Yeah. No. At this time, yeah, it had been six years since I had been in that uh, New Jersey vibe where everybody knew everybody at the deli and people said weird shit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we hung out, you know, the blacks hung out with the blacks. There's a scene in there with the guy from Taxi Driver. No. With a guy from Deer Hunter, John. Hurt? No. No, John Voigt. No, John Pump Up Deer Hunter. There's a guy. We just spoke about him. I did a movie with him. Very nice guy. He's the white guy in the Deer Hunter that doesn't go to Vietnam. Not Fredo, but the other dude. John something is his name. Anyway. Let's see here. It don't fucking matter. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Talking about uh, starting off in college. So John Savage. John Savage. Yeah. John Savage is the... Have you seen Do the Right Thing? Yeah. John Savage is the white guy that steps on the black dude's sneakers. He's from Boston. Oh, yeah, yeah, He has yeah, the right. Boston shirt on. Right. And we, you're from Boston. No, I'm not. I own this. Ah! And they all... Ch <laughs> you know, Do the Right Thing blew my mind. Yeah. Because it let me... Where I was living, I, had, I was taming it down a little bit, but it let me realize I was okay. Right. And it was about... The, the true meaning about was a neighborhood... And the Irish were on one corner, and the Jews were on the other corner, and the Koreans were on the one corner, and we all said, fuck the Irish, and the Jews said, fuck the Irish, but the Irish said, fuck the Jews. But at the end of the day, we all made it work. Because we know deep down inside, we do business with one another. Who are you kidding? You know, even though that the spit kid came over here, gave me a dollar bill, where'd he go? You know what I'm saying? You know yeah. me. You know my family. You know my father. You know my mother. You know my sister. And then you, and then one day your brother comes into work, and you flirt with my sister, and she walks away, and you, your brother says to you, "Greg, what the fuck? You can't be talking to these big chicks." But you're like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" She brought me a Cuban sandwich the other day. Look at her in that dress. She's beautiful. I would dump my little Stacy for her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even though. But at the end of the day, we all got along. And sometimes, and I'm not, listen, I'm not here sticking up for anybody or voting for anybody or just saying anything. I think that's what happened with Trump in a way. I think that's what happened with Trump in a way. I think he's, dog, I say some outlandish shit. <clears throat> Is it from the fucking heart? Come on, Greg. You yeah. know people. You know it's not from the fucking heart. Right. But it's how guys like you and I were raised. Yeah. You heard the word spick growing up in Boston a few times. The fucking spick a ruse at the store. Whatever the fuck. And one of you said, well, are you fucking kidding me? That guy's got good cake. He's got good cake in there. You ever have the <laughs> cake? And they're like, what are you kidding me? He's a fucking spick. You know, it, it, but it all works. Yeah. It's not like you're going in there with bats with Al-Qaeda blowing up my ice cream machine and shit. <laughs> you know, you just say the fucking spick store. Where I grew up in Jersey, there was a spick store on the corner of 40th Street right there. And they used to make the best Cuban sandwiches. And no matter how many spicks you hated, you were in there once a day for one of those Cuban <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> with onions, with hot yeah. sauce on that motherfucker. Right. What? In the dead of a winter, he had air conditioning. 
He would let you eat in there in the corner with a nice tea with the cup when they were fucking still in cartons. Uh huh. That's how long ago. Yeah. Fuck you. It works. Yeah. I think people, you know, listen, man. All right, let me give you an example. About a year ago, where the fuck am I? I'm at that sushi place I like over on Ventura. I'm sitting there minding my own business. It's about 1 o'clock. I don't go in there during lunchtime. I go in there about 1.30 because during lunchtime you get too many fucking hypocrites going in there. So I go in there about 1.30. There's nobody in the corner. There's a TV right above me. I sit in there. The place is fucking empty. All of a I look up and there's a fucking chick sitting next to me. Between you and I, she can't be more perfect. Just how I like them. Spring dress on, banging, Asian. I don't know the denomination. 30 feet. Oh, she had flip-flops on, yeah. even better. Yeah. Her toenails were done. I look over, I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it, and I'm watching the TV, but while I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, what if, <laughs> what if I just dove between her fucking legs right now <laughs> and ate her pussy, right? <laughs> but by that time, the sushi guy came and dropped that Philly roll on me with no asparagus, <laughs> and I killed that fucking savage, and then I paid my bill and I left, but... The moral of the story is, does that make me sexist? <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Does that make me fucking sexist? I'm sitting there minding my own business. The restaurant is completely open. She's got to sit next to me. Right. Really? Yeah. Really? There used to be a show on HBO when you were very young called The Hitchhiker. Yeah, I remember that. Midnight, one in the morning. Yep. It was about a guy that was lonely. He'd be hitchhiking. And somebody would bring him home, suck his dick. Every week. Scrub his nutsack. It was, yeah. oh, my God. I had to be about 11. I didn't jerk off then, but I'd watch the whole episode with enthusiasm. Like, like my head was going to blow up. Like, something ain't right here. Yeah, that was the first, like, dirty series. Yes, Lee. It was Tremendous. Like, it was like the Red Something Diary, Red Dress Diaries or something, and there was that. Was it on, like, a Cinemax or an HBO? HBO. Or? I think it was HBO. HBO. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dirty, dirty. I thought it was like CBS the hitchhiker, and he'd be driving, he'd be walking down the road. HBO at first, I'm talking about when they had the football series, yeah, fourth and f- something, mm-hmm. and then after that was the show. The sh- this this is when HBO didn't have a lot of content, and they repeated the same thing only out of order. But when when that show was on, it was 1983. And it was basically fourth and down, something like that. It was a football show. And then after that was The Hitchhiker or Bedtime Diaries. Yeah. And then after that was wah, 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 some fucking bug, some fucking thing in a the theater. It was like a spooky show. And by that time, I'd be all jerked up. I'd be in bed. <laughs> Fuck that. And the USA had a great show. And up, those, all, well, it was oh, up All Night with... Night Flight. Oh, right. Night flight. Yeah. You would get home early. Like, you'd say, wait a second. I got 200. I'm going to drop a G bow. That's a gram. I'm going to get a, a quarter ounce of weed. That's another 50. That leaves me with 50. I got two options here. I could take the G bow and do it up on Friday night, and then I'm dead Saturday. Or I get the fucking quarter of reefer, get a steak, get a, a salad, smoke some reefer, and stay in and watch night flight. That's how good night flight was. Yeah. Like. Started at 9 o'clock. You already had the blanket on your feet. All your friends were out jerking off. We had a great time last night. Not as good as me, bitch. I had a bong with snow in it, with salami sandwiches, watching night flight like a motherfucker, doing a bong every 15 minutes and shit. And night flight would end at 5 in the morning, Lee. That's when I was a professional. That's when I was Lee Jr. And I would move to do two things. Go to the bathroom or get more salami out of the refrigerator. <laughs> that was it. What is it like to smoke, smoke out of a bong with uh, uh, snow S- in it? Snow. That's how I, I, I lived in Colorado, and the snow was right outside my door. It snowed 25 days in a row straight when I lived there one time. Like They were saying, Shit. it's not going to snow this season. They're going to close them. I used to listen to Paul Harvey then. I was a construction guy. I was an electrician. And I just listened to Paul Harvey, the, the slopes of Colorado are bare. You know, they might not be open by Thanksgiving. Dog, it started snowing like on the 21st. And it didn't end until December. You thought you lived in hell. You'd leave your house, it was snowing. You'd come home, it was snowing. 
You go to bed, it was snowing, and you wake up, and it was snowing. Sometimes heavy, sometimes light. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. It's kind of dark when it's like that, too. It's fucking... It's like... Snow mass was like a central thing. I lived on the one end of it, and then you crossed over, and there was a hotel named the Stone Bridge. And they advertise on Facebook. I see him on Facebook now. I used to have a fucking room there. I was security there for about a month or two. They gave me a spare bedroom. I had a safe in there with cocaine like a savage, right? Oh, I was confusing him. You were living in the room? Not not at all. I had clothes in there and a toothbrush. And I think twice I went in there and I would stay in that paranoid and jerk off and, you know, pee in a beer, a beer bottle and shit. And <laughs> then in the morning, fucking go out there and throw away the beer bottles and make believe it didn't happen. I don't remember. I don't think there was a bathroom. Something was weird about it. It was the security part of the hotel, so they gave you a room with a shower but no toilet. Mm. Something crazy. A toilet but no shower. I don't remember what it was. Fucking craziness. Yeah. What's up, Lisa? I at my little brother. You're sitting there like fucking goobly con. What happened? No, I'm just listening. It's a... Uh... I missed like when we were driving to Foxwood. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, we don't get that around here. It's all it's like all concrete and dust and. Oh, you got snow up there? Wait, no, there's no. No, snow. this last weekend I did Wilbur on Friday, and I did Foxwoods on Saturday, which I really fucking enjoyed Foxwoods. Mm. I really fucking did. Like it's some casinos you go to, and you're like, I'm never, ever, coming here again. This one, I'm, I'll be there tomorrow if they wanted me. I wish. They did something. I, I would fucking live there. You just did one night there. Yeah, that's it. And I really liked it. Mm. They used to have a comedy club there, so I guess they have a smaller room somewhere. That'd be a nice place to just fucking hang out for a year, crack jokes. Yeah. Get a couple of rooms, go to the sauna, include a massage one once a week. <laughs> I'm getting old, dog. I ain't got time for this shit. Yeah, getting I know. on planes and shit. You're right. Yeah, I'd like to do a residence, man. I, I would. I could do that. I could live in Vegas for a year. You know, just do the same gig every night. Keep the door. Fucking promote it a little bit yourself. I could live in Vegas and do a podcast with my main man here. Yeah. Hmm. My main man, all I got to do is say the word. We're going to move to Vegas. And in 30 days, he come back to me and say, Joey, I already looked at property online. I looked at Yelp. Oh, yeah? I'd, I'd be I'd be broke in six months. I need, I need, like, a personal don't go gambling coach to, like, smack me every time because... I would love. I love gambling. Didn't you gamble this last week? I won. Yeah. What time did you leave to go gamble? That's what I want to know. I didn't know. do it. I didn't spend any time in the room. So you went upstairs, dumped your stuff, and went right to the casino. The shower didn't work, so yeah, I was like, "Fuck it." And what did you play? Blackjack, as always. And did you win? Yeah. How much did you win? Fifty bucks. I didn't get a five or a ten. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing comes Let my him wet way. his beak. Nothing, nothing. This is what I'm living Show with. Show some respect. Four years of college, Greg Fitzsimmons, nothing. <laughs> he doesn't even come with a cup of coffee, Doug. I won 50. <laughs> 50, this is $3, but fuck, at least you made a gesture. I'll forget about the seven. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I apologize. I'm bringing he donuts. gave you nothing. You flew him in. Unbelievable. He wins not 50 even, bucks and he's nothing, fucking not even right taste. back to his room. No, not even a flower. <laughs> You could have bought no, me a flower from the Asian girls. I brought you, I brought you uh, um, a fucking that's lobster right. tail. He did. He brought me a lobster tail. Oh, did he? All yeah, right. he couldn't bring me a workout. He brought me a lobster tail, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was you good. Know, I, and, he, he had a cookie upstairs and something else. And after we left the fucking uh, uh, the all what's the name of it? The seafood place. Legal seafood. Legal seafood. He was acting funny. And I knew he was up to something. He went right upstairs and hailed that la lobster tail. Oh yeah! And the fanny pack he had. What was the name of it? The funny bunny. Whoopie pie. Whoopie pie. Oh yeah, I, he couldn't leave till he had a whoopie pie. A mini whoopie pie from Bova's. <laughs> then he went the next day. I walked five miles. I did. But he ate a pie, and then he walked back like. I, I you know what I'm saying? He's trying to tell me he exercised. <laughs> I didn't eat nothing. He walked five miles, but he had two pies and meatball sandwich. He, he's looking to me in the face, <laughs> telling me he had a slice. I, had I know this. Motherfucker, I like the back of my hand. That's he went there. He got ice cream. Five miles. He's trying to tell me he walked five miles. I remember when we first got here. Ralphie May first got signed by uh, the Laugh Factory, and the first thing Jamie said to him was like, "Ralphie, you have to work out. You got to lose a little weight, Ralphie." Exactly. 
So they tried to like get him like a dietitian, and they got him like an exercise guy. Ralph refused the exercise guy. He's like, listen, I exercise on my own. And they're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, Ralphie, please. He goes, I get up at 6 in the morning. When nobody's around, I walk 4 or 5 miles. You know, okay. So somebody put, like, watch on it to see if this is going on. And one day they, I got the call. You got to go over there and talk to him, you know. And I actually went over there and knocked on the door. I opened the door. There's nothing but curtains. You think there's a crack hole in there, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And Ralphie's in the bed just, just covering his bed. All you see is his hands sticking off the matches. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Ralphie, what's up? He's like, ooh, Nelly. <laughs> He's like, Coco. Man, I just got back from an eight-mile walk, man. He hadn't left the fucking house. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, he would never, you know. Yeah. These guys come up to me. I had walked five miles. This guy has a hard time walking to fucking he walks the subway sandwich yeah i have i have he, evidence he's, on periscope by he's, the way. he's never walked to to popeye's chicken because that'll kill him no I, dude if i walk to popeye's chicken you have spies in the area no, but i know God, you do listen you can't go to popeye's chicken and ain't 92 pieces of chicken but you go to popeye's chicken and maybe get a fucking wing and a leg get a little dirty rice the little thing get the fucking sweet tea it ain't gonna kill you it ain't going to kill you. You just can't go in there and eat the fucking potatoes and the french fries and the fucking Why, did he bun. quit going there? Huh? He quit going there? No, no, no. We were talking about it then. You know, it's not a bad place. Right. But the walk, he sent him back three days. Right. He's trying to tell me he got up in Boston, walked five miles. I did. Look at that. And only ate one slice. You only ate one slice. I I, I, you know when I ate the did you eat on? Did you eat on camera? No. Oh, ah, all right then. I didn't eat. But what did you put on camera then? The walking. Okay, so the walking's on camera. Yes, sir. But the eating isn't. I, I, I ate the slice of pizza. <laughs> You know, he's, he's you know, saying you know how. You now know, you tell me no, if this no, is law and no, order. No, no. Listen, he's not listen, covering the whole day. Listen, you know how cool. This I is like am? an OJ tape. You know how cool I am. I went and I called and I went and I got the slice of pizza in between, and uh, and and in the uh, the UFC fight. I was trying to get the stream. When I got back, I was trying to stream the uh, McGregor fight, but it, it didn't it didn't work. But I got the slice of pizza before the p fight came back on. What did he just say to me? I have no idea. Well, did you, let me ask you something. When you walked the five miles, yes. Did you eat the slice no. of pizza? Did you after you just walked the five miles and didn't no, eat nothing? We went to Legals. That's when we met my mom. So after the five mile walk is when we went to Legals. Yes, sir. You did not walk the five miles and get a slice of pizza. No, sir. When was a slice of pizza in the at, after I came back at, from at Fox Foxwoods? Woods. And, I, and I went upstairs, and you went between, upstairs, yeah, I, and I, I called you like one, like, what are you doing? And I'm sitting here, and I'm hungry. I'm hungry, too. Call me if you go eat. I, I never did. heard from him I again. I did, too, call you. <laughs> never heard from him again. He took <laughs> off. The, he walk, now, that's, so at one in the morning, you walked five miles. God no, damn. no, one in the morning, I walked like two minutes to the place oh, in the corner. Okay. I called you too. No, you did not I call did. me. You didn't, uh, nobody knocked on my door with a slice after you won the fifty. <laughs> so you won the fifty. You didn't even knock on my door with nope. a slice, a pepperoni pie, a soda, a diet Dr Pepper, nothing. A T-shirt from a the gift shop. Nothing. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Four years at Emerson College, they don't teach you fucking smoozing one hundred and one. No. Man. You gotta, you know, this guy flew you in. He's paying for your upgrade. It's not even forget about. It. This is my brother. I don't give yeah. a fuck about flying. He's my brother. I love bringing him with me. He's just, you know, he's just Johnny Bananas. When I take him some places, he goes on missions. <laughs> I, I'd rather have. He makes me nervous because this motherfucker will, will walk eight miles and take a, a Uber for a hot dog. Yeah. Because he saw it on dives, drives, and automobiles. That makes me fucking nervous. Yeah. I don't know what neighborhood this is. I don't know these people. Right. You follow me? And so wherever it fucking is, he goes. We're in Jersey. We're shooting a fucking documentary. We go to bed at 2 in the morning. I go to get him at 5. There's pizza boxes and chicken McNuggets. <laughs> I go, where the fuck did these come from? I, I walked across the street at 5 in the morning to the gas station. No. You that, trust those people? He, he, the, oh, you should have seen the room. Oh, it he was fucked. Domino's. It was not gas station. Get the station fuck, pizza. Domino's. He walked to the gas station, got ribs. No, from I didn't a, yes, oh, it, my God. There was barbecue sauce everywhere. <laughs> He's what? got three hours to sleep. He goes out to eat. Unbelievable. 
<laughs> this guy well, goes out the well, In my defense, you're giving me, like, uh, my first major edibles. You're giving me the banana bread and just leaving me there with, like, <laughs> dinner three hours ago. And yeah, we look. brought home Chinese. I left them with an egg roll. No, that, yeah. I didn't get Domino's that night. Oh, you got Domino's the night before we got to Kennedy Airport. Yeah. I went up to get them, four in the morning. What's the smell? I thought it was a fucking <laughs> Bella Luna, you know what I'm saying? He's got pizza and those rolls, cheese rolls and shit. Yeah. He's got his feet up like fucking feet up. <laughs> this what guy's a, life. He's a fucking lurker in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I'm trying, like, I forgot about 24-hour room service. I always mm. fucking forget it. It's worth the extra 50 mm -hmm. because you're always hungry at 2 in the morning when you wake up. Yeah. And they don't have the best shit, and they rip you the fuck off. As you're signing the bill, you're like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Oh, yes, life? like three, three different service charges. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, when I go to Vegas, they give you an account, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Listen, I'll pay you 15 to go get me eggs. Mm -hmm. If I don't have to walk that walk of death downstairs through the cigarette smoke, to the cloud of death, to the waitress of one eye. The sadness the... on everybody's <laughs> face. Yeah. Three guys like Lee wrestling for a hot dog. And <laughs> <eight. laughs> Every time I go to the South Point and I walk past the hot dog cart, I think about Lee. And they just put a sign, three hot dogs a lot. And they have like a picture of Lee. Like... <laughs> we went to the South Point. He killed that black dude. That black dude. Lee kept going back and forth like a fucking yo-yo because it's like 10 feet from the sports book. Yeah. Hilarious. I, when when those hot dogs when that put them that dude turned that side around. <laughs> I've never know. gotten more than like two hot dogs. Stop there. it! Stop! <laughs> stop it! Stop it, Lee! You killed that poor man. No, I did not. Yes, because that's and it's a woman. <laughs> no, it's a black dude. No, it's not. Because what happened was you had like three or four of them, and then I left, and you went back there. And you got like two, two more and took them up to a room with like a cheesecake or something. Because it's like, oh, no, no. They have the bookie thing. Then they got the fucking hot dog stand. But 43 yards from the hot dog stand. And that might be exaggerated. It might be 32. There is a place that if you're a fat fuck and you like marijuana, your diet will fail. Like whatever system you're on, yeah. it will fail. The food isn't bad, but the bakery is on the point. Really? If you really like bakery stuff and you got an East Coast flair to you, yeah. I don't know the name of it. Lee, you know the, the bakery which uh, uh, Larry always got us the fucking cake from. Right, yeah. How good is that cake? You took that it's to delicious. your room, yeah. cocksucker. I mean, it's like a, oh yeah, he killed that motherfucker. Yeah, after Listen, you bought I mean, it for me, and then you're like, yeah, and then you got mad that I was going to eat I it. didn't fucking buy it for you, cocksuck. I would never buy oh, yeah, it. Your friend did. Larry bought it for us, and I didn't want it, and there was an extra one. And Lee looked at me like, fuck it, I'll take it to go. I'm like, Lee, you're not going to eat that. <laughs> sure enough, he got up in the middle of the night sleepwalking. <laughs> did you? Well, oh, he's oh, a lurker. I, the cake. Yeah. I don't trust him. And then he'll go, listen, I'll take him to Austin, yeah. and he'll go like on Yelp or something, at least in Austin. We have our boy Bobby Sharon, but if not, he'll go on like Yelp or something, but they have good ribs, and he'll go to some bad fucking neighborhood, you know. Just get an Uber and go? Yeah, he's that kind of boy I could do because the, 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 the ribs are good. I saw it on wow. TV, and next thing you know, I'm nervous. I'm like an uncle. I lose him on the road. I got to right. fucking tell people what happened. He got stabbed at the Mexican restaurant. Why did he go there? I don't fucking know. He saw it on fucking uh, Food Hub or whatever the fuck it is. So now you got to go wherever he goes. You got to be alert. No. So I try to take him to good places to keep the, his curiosity away. But he's just got this fucking monkey on his back. He's like Joey Diaz 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, you got to go somewhere where you're not supposed to be. Last time we went to Austin, to he looked me in the center. face. With all the barbecue and all the Papa Do's, he looked me, he called me and he says he was going to take a cab to an all you could eat Chinese buffet. In Austin? That's the last place you would even think about Chinese food. This is where Boots and Butts <laughs> yeah. wanted to go eat. I saved right. him from himself. I had to call Bobby Sharon and go, Bobby, you got to help me. <laughs> you got to take this kid out of his room to fucking a barbecue. He took him to Chewy's. He almost had a heart attack. Yeah. Because if not, he's danger to himself. Chinese was, food in Austin. He's horrible. 
He's got food poisoning. He's giving everybody food poisoning. Well, China's food was close, and you're talking about don't go far away. No, there was a lot of things. You could pop a dozer's right across the street hey. with a 19-page fucking menu. Cut it out, cocksucker. Why take a chance? I don't know. <clears throat> Even Columbus wouldn't go to that Chinese restaurant. You understand me? <laughs> What else you got going on, Killer? Talk to me. Always a pleasure it. talking to you, man. You I know. It's good hanging. when I go on your podcast, we laugh our ass off. Yeah. Fuck, Lee's, man. Lee's the fucking powerhouse of the show. Look at him. He's it's up. something about Lee's presence. It just, like, makes you not worry about anything. He's like the, he's like a Buddha. I'm happy. I'm happy that... I'm, Lee's got the watch I don't on. Know. He's got the watch. <laughs> oh, fuck right. That fucking chocolate puts you over the top. <laughs> Yeah, that chocolate. is it chocolate uh, pot or mushrooms? Oh, it's this, it's this chocolate we used to eat maybe a year and a half ago, and we get desperate. It, it, it kicked up the. It, it was the very beginnings of us kicking up the edibles. It said two forty on the box, and him and I would split it. It was one twenty, and we would get sizzled, fucking sizzled on one twenty. <laughs> And then one day I bought like two boxes and we had to eat it. One each. No. Oh, we went deep. He almost barfed the poor guy. But he ate the chocolate and we got fucked up. But then something happened. The guy who was making the shipment would let him sit in his car too long. So they would melt in the wrapper and then you'd get them and they'd be like cooked but now frozen yeah. again. So they went downhill for a while. Well, they made a comeback with a whole new fucking line. Plus different flavors like chocolate espresso or something caramel or just some regular milk chocolate. Yeah. So I was in there tonight getting the other shit we get because we're out of stars even though we ate one. Uh, and I saw they were back and the girls like that 240 milligrams. People really like them. I said, you don't have to tell me about them. Me and Lee saw the fucking devil two or three times on them. I got a package of those and that's what we opened up. We opened up under the pirate tea first. Yeah. Little chocolate, like yeah. the French people, you know what I'm saying? Nice. And then we went over to gummy bears, this little fucking death gummy, cushy something. They fucking kill you. Uh huh. You know, we go low caloric. Right. We don't like eating cookies or cakes. Uh, no, I can just see your guys, uh, your your bodies. They no, really no, show no, a no, lot no, of no, no. You know us, training, you know, training, big time fucking training. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm fucking sizzled. Yeah. That chocolate's got my eyes all fucked. Up. Wait, 240, that 240, is that normal for, uh, like, if somebody eats gummy bears? How many how many milligrams is well, that? We always got to remember that we eat a lot of stars of death. Like, what, the amount of stars, like, those are the 125s. Those are the small ones to us. We eat those on bad nights. Like, Anarchy Edibles, we love Anarchy. The Anarchy Edibles is our main thing. Yeah. Star One Edibles, that's what they are on Twitter now. They're our main motherfuckers. They always come through for us. The owners are tremendous. The product, I still, I think we've been doing the stars now for 18 months, and they still fucking catch me off guard. Yeah. But I know how to do them now. I stay off them for a week. I give them 10 days. Once I do a star, I won't do them like we're finished. I won't see him now for 10 days. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see him. I'll eat different. And now what, so him and I could devour 1,400 milligram of stars. That'll put a regular person in the hospital. That'll put anybody that I know in the hospital. You start hearing voices. You go deep. You get in your car. Fox will do this. You have wonder. a hard time putting your seatbelt on. But we've built a tolerance of 1,200 to 1,400 milligrams. So I like to switch it up. I'm not fucking retarded. Mm -hmm. It's just like cocaine. If you show up with a pound of cocaine, no matter how good it is, after four nights, it ain't the same shit I was doing the first night. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing an ounce of it. That's where you start fucking eating up the profit. See? Yeah. It's the fourth night because uh -huh. now you're banging on an ounce. The first night you did uh, two grams and you saw the devil. The second night the chick came over. She dressed up like a cheerleader. <laughs> you know, ba 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 boom. You had dead dick. You had dead dick. You're freezing up her ass with a so little it's bit just of coke. Like, it's just like marijuana. If I can't smoke the same stuff every day. I got three different, four different yeah. reefers, and I switch them up. So with the edibles, we do the same thing. So remember, we might be able to eat 1,200 of the stars, 
But if me and him would have ate two forty of that chocolate tonight, we wouldn't be having this conversation mm. right now. I'd be drooling. Yeah, because I could feel the the gummy bear took us to the bridge. The chocolate pushed us into the bridge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. Not over the bridge. No, nah, that's something George bridge. Washington would say. <laughs> He'd be happy right now, pot being legal. So, All those founding fathers, they'd be fucking smiling, saying, finally. I just They believed uh, in weed. You know, listen, you know I love you to death. I don't know the history of weed. I know the history of weed as far as 1973. <laughs> After that, I don't know it. And guess Modern what? Between history. Between you and I, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I know about weed since like 1968. Because my mom smoked. Yeah. Very once a week. But I smelt it. It wasn't what they smoked in the cigarettes when they played cards and shit. Something wasn't up. Something wasn't right. But I had a godfather. Catholicism godfather. And as crazy as he was, he'd pick me up every Saturday and take me for a sandwich and watch a, a movie on 42nd Street. And by the end, he'd fucking spark one. And he'd start giggling like, oh, fuck, that's the same smell I smell at the house. Once you start figuring it out, you're not a fucking moron. Right. And then he would giggle and crack jokes and show me his gun. He wouldn't act like he did an hour ago. Something wasn't right with that fucking wacky tobacco. Got baked and started showing the gun around to a kid. That's fucking great. He took his gun out after Dirty Harry. After Dirty Harry. Like, he took me to the movie. The whole walk, he told me about the gun. It's a 38 Magnum, whatever the fuck it is, 44 Magnum. It's the strongest gun. It'll blow your head off. We went to some little restaurant where there was, like, a table across from us. And at the restaurant. He goes, put out your hand in the bottom. I saw him fidgeting. It was winter time, so he had a jacket on. And he was fidgeting, and also he goes, put your hand down. And he just gave it to me. And he goes, it has no bullets in it. And I shit my pants. It was bigger than fucking black. He said, this is the same gun fucking... Uh, Dirty Harry? Dirty Harry had. All right. And I almost shit my pants. I gave it back to him. He's like, don't tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> For me to get more action from him, if I rat him out, I'll never get action from him. That's a great uncle. Godfather. Godfather. Oh, Godfather. That's when Godfather's a Godfather. That's when people believed in, uh, you know, when you were somebody's godparent, it meant that uh, you went to visit them once a month, mm. you called them, you always sent them like a stupid savings bond, even if it was 10 bucks. I had a fucked up Godfather, but he was good when I needed him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he used to take me to his girlfriend's houses and tell me little things about women on the way home, and I'd fucking tell him, no, I don't like little girls. You know what I'm saying? And he'd tell me someday, you don't like girls, you got to suck their titties. And say, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even like girls yet. <laughs> I'd be saying, what's titties? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and then uh, that, that's where you learn. You got to have a relative that tells you little details about girls. <laughs> You know? They put like a porno on in front of you. Yeah, it almost blows up. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh my buddy uh Cuban guy. I won't I won't say his name, but uh his older brother put on a porno one time when I was probably about twelve and I'm watching it and it, and I get a you know, I got an erection. And then his his brother's name was Hector and he reaches over and he he uh, grabs my dick. And he goes, hey, you like this? You like this movie, huh? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'd like, I'd never had anybody touch my dick in my and life. What did you do? You just ran out of that. I just fucking... You never told nobody, not even anybody. the priest. I, don't th I think this might be the first time I ever brought it up. <laughs> It was like one of those memories that's like lodged back there you gotta write under this a rock. A, you got to write this into a bit. Yeah, hey, you like it, huh? <laughs> you know, my first ever disgusting experience was with the Ali brothers. I got thrown out of Sacred Heart School for Boys in the fifth grade. And I went to McKinley in the sixth grade. In the sixth grade, there were these Spanish kids called the Ali's. 
Juan and Alberto. Juan was legit, but Alberto was going to talk. <laughs> the Ali's. <laughs> oh, just fucking hilarious. You couldn't write this. But in the sixth grade, you're 12, maybe 13. They were like 14 and a half and 16. Yeah, like right. the, the one that was slow. Yeah. It was like 15 in those days. They just kept leaving you back. That's right. Until you learn the English language. So humiliating. Every new They didn't give a fuck. Like... They were just happy to be in the United States. Yeah, right. They went somewhere from 9 to 3. They <laughs> they sang songs. They saluted the flag. The Cubans were happy in those days. Are you kidding me? They were fucking... The Cubans I knew in those days right. were fucking... The kids were fucking... Salute the flag. Oh, they were saluting the flag and shit and, Going to Bible study and singing, oye, la música católica, compadre. Dios, papá, Dios. They were legit to quit. But the Ali's were the first people I ever met, ever, beside my godfather that ever spoke to me about sex. And then I had this Puerto Rican dude on my block, Puerto Rican Nelson. He lived in the back. He was a bartender in the city. He used to always ask me. And he wasn't a freak or nothing. I always thought that at one point he would molest me. Yeah. And even till today, I think deep sometimes. And fucking Puerto Rican Nelson never molest me because he used to always have a robe on and slippers and shit. <laughs> That's how he walked around? Oh, my God. Puerto Rican Nelson. I love that you're not sure if he did. You feel like it's maybe... Yeah, like I think, did he ever dope me? Like he ever put a Cosby on me? Because everything about him fits like an M.O. He was just a good dude. Yeah. That we used to go outside and help us fix our bike. And he was a Spanish dude. And he was just, you know, he had the sideburns and the leather jacket. And it was the fucking early 70s. And I moved to Jersey. And he would talk to a bunch of us. And one day he would take us in the back. His claim to fame with me was that I became friends with him, and I go over there, and he had a black friend uh, that had went over to the, the Rock of Gibraltar, and he brought pictures back, and then he would just talk to me, and then one day, he asked me, 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 me. <laughs> you, had a, you had a couple of beers, you ever go to somebody's house, and you, you go to their house a lot, and they're sober, but one day you catch them, and they're fucking hammered. Yeah. And we go over there, and it's like early in the morning. Like, I used to go over there every morning at 10 and wake him up and, 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 and what's up, man? What are we going to do today? Give me an hour. I'll go out there and play stickball with you. And he'd come out with coffee, and he reeked of alcohol. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> one of those dudes in the summer. You know, no air conditioning. Your place. Just a dynamite dude. Yeah. And one day, uh, I knock on the door, and he answers with a towel around him, and he's sitting down like he's all fucked up. I go, Nelson, you're going to play football? He's like, man, not today, you know, and all this shit. He goes, come back in like two hours. So, you know, we were, in those days, you're punctual. Yeah. Like, we were there in two hours. He answered the door, you guys again? The fucking curtains were still up. He invites us in. He's got a towel on. You know, he turns the light on, and there's like a table filled with alcohol, you know, and like. Oh, yeah? How old were you at this point? Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, and I can't remember. What? Who the fuck I walked in there with? Like, it was like six of us in the neighborhood that liked Nelson, but two of us actually interacted a little closer with Nelson. Yeah. I was Spanish, so I understood Nelson's world. I knew Puerto Rican people, but I can't believe who else <laughs> was the other guy that mingled with Nelson. So we had woken Nelson up. He goes, come in, come in. We sit on his couch. You guys want a soda? He gives us a soda. He puts the TV on. You can see he's still fucked up from the night before. He's got the towel on, and he's like, so you guys get late? And we don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, nobody ever spoke to me like that. I had uncles that would ask me, anybody suck your dick yet? Yeah. Are you pissing sweet yet? That type of shit. <laughs> but this... <laughs> you pissing sweet Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're Spanish, they preguntan, oye, tu me it. You know what I'm saying? Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great line. <laughs> but Nelson was basically the first person ever, but like... Oh I goodness. I known about sex, but Nelson was the first person ever that said it could be yours. You know, I'm like, like, what do you mean you never had sex? I got a girl right now. She'll come over and clean your pipe. You know, we're like, and we're both like fucking shit in our pants. <laughs> yeah, you come up with like ten dollars or something. We're like, nah, nah, nah. 
<laughs> so that was it. He never talked about it again. And then one day we're sitting there like a month. <laughs> I just love this a guy. <laughs> like a, a guy month. in a fucking towel has neighborhood boys over and offers to get them all over. <laughs> and he's drunk. Because he's outraged that they haven't had sex at 14 or 12. <laughs> so he was cool as fuck. Yay! He used to play b- basketball with us and shit. So one day I go over there with this kid and he starts telling us. What's his name again? I'm Puerto Rican Nelson. We go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it be capitalized? No, Puerto Rican Nelson was cool as fuck because. He used to bring us weed from the city, and he would actually give us seven joints for five dollars. Wow! He really took care of us. It wasn't like he was a bad guy, which to me meant the world, because a lot of people could bring you weed over in those days. But they say I take a joint off the top. Mm. He was like, I, I gotta go over there anyway. Don't worry about it. The guy gives me a better deal. So I always liked him because of that. So one day we're there, and a, and a girl's there. A girl comes out of his bedroom. Me and my buddy are like, wow. Look at Puerto Rican now, some of the broads. She sits on his lap and shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my girl. And he's feeling her up. And he's making out in front of her. <laughs> and feeling the titties and shit. <laughs> and me and my buddy are frozen. Like, we're just, I can feel, I can feel, I can't remember who the fuck it was. So, wow, boom, how old just, was this guy? This guy had to be 28 and the bro was like 21. But he was, he was one of those, he had to be 26 maybe. He, he was from somewhere else and he lived there. This is before the computer and before Neighborhood Watch and before. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no one was freaked out by a pack of 12 year olds hanging out with them. No, because like, in those days a lot of parents came out and play with kids. And you I play know, that's different touch. now. See, it's different now. I would never now. be able to play with a random kid no, in my No, so everybody knew him from the neighborhood. And in those days we wanted to go into the murky waters. Yeah. And he was kind of opening the door. Not really, to be honest with you. Mm. It took a long time. It's not like he lurked us into his house and said, do you guys want to have sex? This is after we knew him for a year. Right. We, we go back there all the time to get water after a basketball game. We knew him, you know. But now he knew we were growing up and he knew what our needs were. I look at it now. Like he was, he was just trying to, but we couldn't handle it. Yeah. So one day we're sitting back there. We had a basketball game. And he's like, hey, man. What'd you think of that fucking broad the other day? Me and my buddy like, oh, she was banging. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, tell, tell these guys how hot she was. And me and my buddy's like, yeah, she was hot. And he's like, oh, when can we see her? He goes, listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> he goes, listen, I'm going to fuck her tonight in the living room. And I'll leave the window open. You guys can come by and listen. <laughs> <laughs> that was his thing for like a dollar a piece that was his fetish oh my god he got he into was... boys listening to him <laughs> fuck we got there he was fucking the shit out of her doggy style we all ran away we were like mortified <laughs> we got there 10 minutes before he started fucking her we're like, not even in there. And all of a sudden, you heard her go, oh, oh. And he's like, yeah, that's it. Suck it. <laughs> we tried to look. We... <laughs> there must have been eight of us trying to look at that window. We just heard them fucking fucking. And I heard meat. Like, that's the first oh, time I heard balls. Yeah. Hit. And we ran out of that dog. And the next, day, he's like, <laughs> the next day, he's like, did you guys come by? <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, uh. Dude, that's the weirdest fucking neighborhood guy I've ever heard. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! Well, that guy's great. But the Ali brothers. Think about how many like first you had with that guy. First drinking, fucking. Seeing... Not even drank with him. I don't think he didn't. No, be... no, 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 no. He got his weed, and he was like, "Dog." If I do this for you, you got to keep it on the level. I can't have, the, you know, he was very yeah. careful. But the Ali brothers were the first per- people that told me, like, this all was happening at once. So I was living on giving that terrace, but I would play on 26th Street. And the Ali brothers were hysterical. The Ali brothers were the first people I ever met in my life that went to a hookah house. And they would both describe the experience to me. And it was like a fucking perfect film. You couldn't write this. Now in my memory... 
because Juan Ali was very intelligent. And he would say, yeah, you give him 10 bucks. And you go in the back room and they fucking take your shoes off. And they take a bucket out and they wash your dick. And they get on the bed and they ask you what do you want to do if you want a 69. And we do everything. And we do everything. We're there for like an hour. We eat them. They give us a massage. The whole fight. And when you're fucking 12 and a 13 year old's <laughs> telling you this shit, your mind, it's like Pink Floyd the first time. Yeah. You, you go home and think about that shit and think about the possibilities. Right. Like maybe I'll go over there, I'll put on my best suit. I'll get 10 bucks and see what the Bronx has to offer. Are you fucking kidding me? But every Monday, there'd be a circle around these two. And they'd be telling us all their sexual escapades, mm. you know? The oh, fucking yeah. Ali brothers. Until I hit the... I, right, th- right next to where they lived was a company called Duratest. And they made light bulbs. All sizes. They made these things. But the best thing for us as kids was when they made the office, the skinny long ones. Yeah. Oh. All that, ha- I could hit you in the head 25 times, nothing will happen. They just break and you get white powder on you, okay? So we would jump over the dumpster, get like 150 of those things, and everybody would take an armful, and we'd go to war with each other. No shit. Pa pa pa. we'd hit each other. No cuts. Never, never a misunderstanding. And it was me, Juan Ali, Martin Perez, all these white, Dean LaPree, all these white dudes from 2060 were all out there, but there was a roof. <clears throat> a flat roof over a garage next to Juan Ali's house, and there was access to the roof. So we're having this war, five on five, everybody's hitting each other with these fucking things. I run to the roof, I'm having my own private war up in the roof, and somebody throws a rock over. They throw a bulb over, right? <laughs> Then another bulb comes over, bah! and then a rock comes over. Well, I take the fucking rock, and I look at the guy, and I go, don't say nothing. And I throw the rock up, up in the air, right? And I just leave it like that, and all of a sudden you hear, uh! <laughs> and we look over, not the smart Ali, but the retarded one, Alberto, the one that used to always say, see, you so look at my song. Like he was the one that, he was like Louie. He's like that character Louie that wasn't intelligent. But he was going, yeah, 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 I was there. He was that yeah. guy. But I hit him in the head with that fucking no rock. No shit. I clocked him right here. It didn't break, but he got a lump immediately, like a hematoma. Yeah. But it was a hematoma that got that pus went right to it. <sighs> and he had a little pee hole in it, you could see. And he was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the floor. Like, my friends didn't give a fuck. He got in there with the rock. They give it in with light bulbs and shit. <laughs> It's oh, like, what's the movie uh, where New York gets wait, put inside? Like he's a, the I'm, dumb one. <laughs> they hit him maybe through a ten light bulbs <laughs> while, he, while he was down. By the time we got to him, he had powder all over him from the light bulbs. <laughs> but you can still see the lump on his head. I'll never forget it till this day. I always look him up on Facebook and Google him. I can't get a hold of him, and that's how they spelt their name: Ali, A L E. It was a Cuban name, Ali. Yeah. Oh my God! I still think about Berto and Juan Ali, and what and how funny they were together. It was like the first comedy team I encountered. Where well, you're from, you encountered two dudes, who one was just retarded, but he had a friend. And he was the brains of the operation. Whatever the one guy did, the other guy did. Yeah, right. They were both union dudes. Yeah. They both liked the uh, the Pats. Yeah. You know. They, no, you keep thinking I'm a Boston guy. I went to college in Boston. I started doing stand up in Boston. But I grew up in New York. Okay, that's right. Tarrytown, New York. What the fuck is wrong with Uncle Joey yeah. Lee? Now, everybody thinks I'm from Boston. You can't be giving me those edibles, dog. I, I, I apologize. Now, you don't, do, you don't get invited to do the Cam Neely thing? Yeah. Oh, oh you did? You did yeah, I've go done that time? a couple times. You didn't do it this last time. No, you heard about Wanda, right? Wanda who? Wanda Sykes did it, I guess, last night. <clears throat> or maybe the night before, and I guess the, she was doing some material about Trump, and the crowd started booing. And uh, she, I guess she just kind of had it out with them. And then the then she gave him the finger. And then apparently DePaulo went up too and didn't do very well. He was pretty offensive. They said. Yeah, I mean. They didn't like him. You're comedians. You're at a fucking comedy show. You know, the crowd just got to accept that. 
I always thought that comedy was how your world collided with the rest of the world. Right. Okay? That's what I was raised to believe. I say some fucked up shit. Even in the special, I say some fucked up shit about what I feel. Not about how, you know, I'm sick and tired of hearing about how uh, illegal immigrants are ruining the fucking country. There's some good immigrants that have come here. Let's face it, we're all fucking immigrants, okay? I think we got to do a better job, you know, controlling. Do I want to be Trump Jr. and deport everybody? Come on. What the fuck? That's what's bothering people the most right now. Mm. You know, that's what's bothering people the most right now. Um, yeah, it's I mean, a non-issue. They brought it up during an election yeah, year, man. but it's not affecting people's lives the way the national news makes you think about it. You know, I'm an immigrant, man. My mom's an immigrant. I'm fucking, every day I wake up, I'm happy to be here, you know? I'm ashamed I have a felony. What do you want me to hide it from people? And then someday it comes on ABC News, a comedian, Joey Davis, has been walking around like he is a Christian, yeah. Meanwhile, he got arrested for kidnapping. He plea bargained to fucking second degree burglary. You know, that's and now people are like, why didn't you ever tell us? Oh, I was embarrassed. What are you embarrassed about? Yeah. That's a Bill's character. Yeah. It's like a hitch in the fucking service. Right. Lee, what are you sitting there fucking? Look at your eyeballs. Like a light of cigarette in your eyeballs right now. They're so red. You look like one of those fucking Jewish people that not you don't you own like a shoe store, and you'll take what they give you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Right now, you got that look to you right now. Like, listen, the sneak is fourteen ninety nine, but it's Thursday. It's ten o'clock. You caught me at a good time. I'll do this deal right now for thirteen fifty, plus tax. Yeah, but it was fourteen ninety nine. No, it was fourteen fifty nine. I'll do it for thirteen fifty nine, plus tax. You just told me thirteen fifty. That was two minutes ago. It's thirteen fifty nine. Right now, it's fourteen oh nine. So, make up your mind. <laughs> Do you not want the sneakers or not? <laughs> I'm fucking stone jack. I'm having a great time on a Monday night. I got a lot of shit tomorrow. Joey O'Neill, you know I love you. It was great meeting you. My man, Jack Yacht Showish. I love you, cocksucker. Robert Navis, Jeff Morris, Laya Hernandez, Lady J, great seeing you. Shet Rogers, Joseph Raphael. And my main man, my cousin, who hit me up today and said somebody came into his fucking jiu-jitsu studio and said he heard about him on a podcast. Tell him, I'll tell you what, man. I grew up with fucking Julio. We both grew up with bookmaking fucking parents. That's how I grew up with Julio. You go to his fucking jiu-jitsu school after class, ask him to tell you stories about when we were like maybe 13 on Saturdays. No, we were like 11 because I was going to Catholic school. So on Saturdays, mandatory, I would have to go to the Bronx with him and go get donuts for the guys, run errands, pick up money. Like, we'd pick up like 100 bucks and think we were gangsters. Mm -hmm. You like, I picked up 100 today. What'd you pick up? And they would pay us like $100 for the day. For like six months, me and Julio would do that. And every Saturday was a different location because they kept moving around so the apartment wouldn't get raided. Fucking tremendous. I mean, that's how we grew up. Then he became a cop. And I became whatever the fuck I became. And we had a, we, we both went to war in 85. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he told me, the cops are looking for you. And if I see you again, I'm going to arrest you. People are looking for you. You pissed a lot of people off. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at him going, I grew up with you. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I grew up with you. You're telling me this shit. He's like, I wouldn't be here if, you, if I was you. <clears throat> so I didn't talk to him for a long time. And I held like a resentment, but then we started talking about six years ago. And now I'm pretty tight with him. I still love him the way we did when we were kids. You know, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? But if you're in Lyndhurst or any of those areas, Karlstadt, Moonaki, like a motherfucker, mm -hmm. Carney, any of those areas, man, go give Anaconda Jiu Jitsu a try. Tell him that you heard it on the podcast, and he'll give you a couple fucking days for free. He'll teach you how to hip escape. And that's that, all right? Yeah, it's a nice deal. No, he's a great guy, Julio. Yeah. He's, it's the holidays. He could always need a fucking economic boost. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He's a great jiu-jitsu teacher. He dedicated his life to that. So he's fucking 20 years. He's one of those fucking morons yeah. that he goes to competitions and the whole deal. You know what I'm saying? What else is going on, dog? Tell me a story. Put my volume on a little louder. I'm a little on the low side tonight. Well, you, know, you ain't producing over there, cocksucker. You're over there in La La Land. 
looking around, thinking about what you eat when you get home. You don't think I know you. I'm not going to go for a three-mile walk. He tried to sell me that one time. I went to Chandler. I did. Then I went down to fucking Moonaki. Then I walked over to Ventura. No, you didn't. <laughs> you went to Chandler. You looked around. You said, Jesus Christ, I'm going to get hit by a car. You turned around and you went home and you said, Woof, it's a tough fucking life we live here. I walked from <laughs> Magnolia and Little Canyon to Chandler and Little Canyon and then to Chandler and Colfax and then from Colfax to Magnolia. Were you sweating? Yes, obviously. Joey's I, getting a call. Getting, Who is it? I sweat all the time. Hmm. All right, so you went for a night. You got a little suntan? Yeah. It was such a fucking beautiful day. Oh, it was one of those days where you wake up, you go to do something, and you go, wait a second, I got to look at my schedule. I'm going to have to cut some shit out today. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to be disappointed. I had the 430 in Hollywood over the hill. That's the first call I made. So yeah. I woke up, I sent the email. It's not happening today. The babysitter didn't show up. That's not happening. I may do the local shit. <laughs> but going over Lower Canyon, I don't even know. Was if it I, for an audition? No. What the fuck they want to see me about? <sighs> Who the fuck knows anymore? Yeah. Just get in the car and go. You know what? I'll see you the week after Thanksgiving. Yeah. The traffic slows down a little bit. You kind of enjoy going down there. You're bored up in the valley. I've been bored. I'm yeah. locked in. I'm, it's time to go to fucking Hollywood and run with the big dogs That's in the right. daytime and shit. <laughs> Take a meet with these bitches. But now nah, you wake up on Monday. I just flew back Sunday from Boston, six hour flight. Yeah. It's a long flight. Even Jet Blue. It's a long fucking flight, though. I know. Three hours, you still got three to fucking go. It's still like two forty five. You're like, Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Thank God I caught that's when the fighter came on FX. But I had commercials, see? But it was still entertaining to me. I yeah. loved it. I loved that movie. <clears throat> he's one of the best actors working today that fucking dude the other one the one that without no teeth he plays Batman oh yeah he's tremendous he really is Yeah. what's up Lee you're looking all tan you're looking like DJ fucking Habib what's his name what's the rapper DJ name? Khaled DJ Khalib look at him this shit yeah. all you gotta do is start rapping you gotta get like a jet ski and throw hundred dollar bills in the air you're assuming I can't rap I never said nothing. I know you're, listen, what these people don't know and fucking Greg Fitzsimmons don't know is you're an international superstar back in Israel. I've been telling people for years. When they go, who's this fucking guy? I'm like, who's this guy? Who the fuck are you, bitch? <laughs> this guy was a director in Israel. Won the fucking Patepu, whatever, film festival, 96. Ra rap superstar. What was it? Rap superstar. And international rap. Superstar, you understand me? <laughs> Lisa had to fuck around. He lost his hair on a chemistry experiment. They did something like with the Michael Jackson thing on stage, and that was the end of him. Take some risks and you lose some, you win some. He got like eight mil in the settlement, Egyptian money, but he got like fucking three mil American. He lent me a hundred grand, and here we are. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying my vig. <laughs> Lee. You gonna write it all down, Lee? I should have been, but no, I have. I, maybe I will eventually. Lee had a good time this weekend. We oh, had a good great. time. That was thank you, people. If you came to the show, it was a great experience for me. You know, uh, I don't know. The last year and a half, Greg, I've been getting anxiety. I get it at two places. I get it at the comedy store when I walk up those little steps. And what on the street? Uh, oh, walking up to the stage. Yeah, walking up to the, like the little. You know when you first get to the store. Yeah. And uh, beautiful, but boom! boom. Uh, when you first get to the comedy store, you're in the hallway. You get your water. You go to the bartender. You give the waitresses a hug. Yeah. I see Greg Fitzsimmons. I give him a hug. I see Lee, I see fucking Theo Vaughn. I got to get back on the podcast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're talking to him, Bobby Lee, you give him a hug, and all of a sudden you look at the list, and all of a sudden he's got the light, and Jeff comes up to you and says, 
You got to get on stage and fight. And you just got the light, Joe. I just saw that. You got five minutes, maybe seven, maybe eight. Right there, I stop the conversation. And I walk up those stairs. I get to the top. I look around. Sometimes I sit down. Sometimes I stand in the corner. And brother, right there. My world just goes. So I usually take the chair and I start breathing. Deep breaths into my fucking stomach and I breathe out. Deep breaths and I pray to God the comet goes long. Keep going, cocksucker. Run with it, bitch. And it stays at like 40%. And once he starts closing up, I get up and right there I get a little bit more to about 55. And then on the way up, I actually have to pace my steps and not let my breath go up. Because if my breath goes up and I let my anxiety go up, I will fucking pass out right there. And by the time I hit the stage at the store, he puts some music on. He puts some disco music on, I dance, and I'm 30%. The opening line, I get a laugh, so I'm running at like 10. If I make it to the 11-minute mark and I'm okay, it all goes away. Mm. And now I'm just running on punches to your fucking head till you fall down like fucking Eddie Alvarez. It's over. Right. It's pretty interesting, but... So how long has that been going on? Maybe like 18 months. Yeah? Doesn't happen on the road. No other no other clubs? Just Every the... once in a while it goes up to about 60. Yeah. But I catch it, I breathe, and it goes down to 15. I go on stage, I say, what's happening, motherfuckers? Yeah. They giggle. We run with that right there. We run with the other 10% that's left. Just gets your adrenaline. It's like Mad Max when they're right on him. He kicks that adrenaline up. Yeah. That's that last 10% that really goes into your act if you use it properly. Yeah. You know? It's like a weird fear that you, and as it's coming out of you, you can feel it coming out of your legs, right. coming out of your nutsack, goes into your stomach. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're laughing. And now it's not the trance they're caught in as much as the trance you're caught in. It's kind of weird when you're rock and rolling at the 18-minute mark. You know, it's a certain cardio. Mm -hmm. It's like a, they say cardio isn't really effective on those machines unless you do 20 minutes. Then after 20 minutes is when you really burn fat. Mm -hmm. I believe the same thing on stage sometimes. Yeah. If you think about it, it takes you a little while to get going. You take a breather for 10 you pace yourself, and then you fucking just go out there like a fucking lunatic. Yeah. I don't fucking know what I'm talking so about. So wait, what's the other the other place you feel anxiety? Oh, yeah, and at the Wilbur Theater. Yeah. It was brutal. Really? Oh. It hadn't been that close in a long time. I get that type of anxiety when you tell me you got to take blood from me. Like, that's the anxiety. that When you walk in a room... And you're going to be, all right, Joey, this is what we got to do. We got to take a little blood sample. No matter how you say it to me, I hear organ music right afterwards. Yeah. Dumb. Like, fuck, my body goes numbness. Always been like that? Oh, since I was a kid. Ugh, that sucks. I go deep into a fucking thing. I've controlled it the last couple of years for my surgery a few months ago from my nose. It was horrible because they kept missing a vein. See, if I don't feel any pain and I breathe right and put the iPod on, Uncle Joey's cool as shit. If you start missing veins and shit, mm. you got to tell me you got to do it again, that's where, that's where it goes fucking bananas. Mm. So even at the blood sample a week later, you have to go to the hospital seven days before the surgery. I had that first beast. And at the surgery, they couldn't fit the fucking thing in a vein in my arm. My feet are going numb just talking about it. And then they profoundly, I said, put in my fucking vein in my hand. Yeah. And it worked in there. And then I woke up and I had uh, straws in my nose held with barbed wire from Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know what that's like for a guy like me? Oh, oh shit. And they're like, you got to spray uh, saline solution in there and shit's going to come out on their own. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Molly, good golly. I'm getting dizzy just thinking about it. What's that, where you blast the saline in one nostril, it comes out the other? Oh, you just blast in the nostril, and all of a sudden chunks start flying out yeah. of your soul. Yeah. And at first, it's disgusting, but then it goes 50-50. It becomes... <laughs> you get into it. 
it becomes half snot, half blood. It's, it's, it's like a clam on a half shell without the salty. It's already comes. You just eat those fucking. <laughs> No, please, please, don't, please don't eat any more burgers in front of me. I got one of these things in my nose. It's like a one of those things that grow on your skin. A, a lesion? Be, like a beauty mark. I <laughs> know. <laughs> a beauty mark? What do you call those things? Like A, a mole? A mole. Mm. I had one in my nose from 30 years of doing blow. I was pissed. I thought they were going to take it out with the surgery. But in that mole, like if you squeeze it once every ten days, a tremendous old school snot comes out, like <laughs> like one of those. No fucking way. Like one of those coke snots. Like I'll feel it too. I'm like that's feeling heavy there. And all of a sudden I'll be sitting there and I'll squeeze it, squeeze it, and I'll feel like something thick. And I'll oh. just pull it out, and it's like a inch and a half oh. with different flavors and different pirate teeps. <laughs> Some parts of it is heavy, it's thick, it's gooey. It's like a fucking Halloween treat. <laughs> and it's there every 10 or 12 days. Oh, my God. I can count for an hour enjoyment every 10 to 12 days. I don't know, I don't know when it's going to What took an hour? <laughs> because that's how long I chew it for. Oh. Until it dwindles into like a little whitehead. <laughs> then I spit it into the air and let it land wherever it goes. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Why am I so fucking high? He's at Flappers this Thursday, which makes it the seventeenth of November. Right. Say, Joey, how do you fucking know that? I'm gonna tell you how I know that, because I'm in Houston on the eighteenth. Nice. And I've been thinking about fucking. Uh, I always fucking think about this shit in November. And I always go, wow, that happened this long ago. Yeah. Like, who was I then and who was I now? Am I the same person? Would I put a gun to your head over a fucking bag of blow today? I wouldn't even give a fuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's amazing how you change. So this time of the year, it gets a little fucked up for me. <clears throat> I'll call the victim on Thursday, say hello. The victim? Yeah, I still talk to Kent. He called into the podcast oh, yeah? once. Yeah. I just talked to him about two months ago. I don't think Kent ever stopped. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kent... Uh, I met Kent in Boulder. Kent was a good-looking dude in Boulder who picked up town. He knew the right people. He hung out with the right people. Those right people supplied him with a fucking car. That's how right those people were. And mm. not just any car. Something right off the lot. It was a... It's a it was a BMW store. So he'd come to town. He'd go, let me get an Audi. Take it, Kent. Kent, you're going to come in here on Saturday and sell cars? And Kent was a good-looking dude, and he'd go in there and sell three BMWs on a Saturday. Yeah. You know, so. But now we talk. He lives in New Mexico. He lives with his mother. He says he lives with his mother because she's sick. Hmm. Whenever he leaves me a message, it's always late at night. Yeah. And he always sounds a little whacked. Right. I was there, so I know what wax sounds like. When I get him in the daytime, he sounds completely different, a little bit more corporate. But I can feel something. He doesn't talk the same, because when I saw him, after I kidnapped him, I kidnapped him in 87, but I saw him again in 93. Yeah. I actually bought blow from him at a bar. Six years after you kidnapped him? Yeah, I never saw him again. And one day I walk into Pearl's, and there he is dancing. I go, Kent, what's happening? He's like, what the fuck? He goes, hey, man. I go, hey, Kent, I'm sorry. You know, and I said, how you doing? Everything all right? Yeah, and he was fucked up. I go, Kent, who's got a gram of blow on this motherfucker? And he goes, I do. Give me the money. I gave him the money. Gave him the gram. He goes, I can't believe you kidnapped me, you motherfucker. And that was it. That was it. I no left, shit. never saw him again. And then Facebook came along, and one night you're high, you're doing blow, and you're like, let me see how... If Kent Bell is on Facebook, and there he is. And I start hitting him up, and fuck you. He would send me those things on t on Facebook. Just fucking around? No, he was serious at first. Really? It took about seven years, man, for him to finally cave. However long, because I, I started nagging him on MySpace. I started nagging him on MySpace. 
And that's where he would send me something back that was nasty and tell me to fuck off. It was crazy. And then when MySpace came, when Facebook came along, I got high one night on Reefer, and there he was in the very beginning of Facebook. And I tried to friend him, nothing. There was a couple people I tried to be fucking friends with, and they were like, fuck you. Why'd you want to be friends with this guy so much? Because you felt guilty? Sure. You know, let my, listen, I didn't hit him. I never hit him in the head with a gun. It's not like I kicked him. I didn't abuse him. I'm not that type of person. It was all how people say. It was business, bro. You came into my life at the wrong time, and you didn't fucking cover your ass, my friend. You, you're dealing in the fucking big leagues here. You're not dealing. This ain't fucking a TV show. This ain't Breaking Bad. You know, you're going to meet some dude on the street and tell him you want to fucking, you have two kilos of blow? Well, what do you think happens? What the fuck do you think happens? The word gets out. That means every barracuda is going to fucking look at you and go, this guy's easy prey. Hmm. All you got to do is get 10,000, lure him into an alley, tell him the money is in the thing, you wanted to see the blow, and when you take him there, you just punch him in the fucking head. You take the 10000 well, who's he going to say? Who, who's he going to say? He stole the blow himself. You follow me? He stole mm. the blow himself. What, what is he going to say? I was young. I was very stupid. I'm not proud of it, but it's who I am today. What are you going to do? You own it. Yeah, what are you going to do? What do you want me to do? Hide it and uh, try to hide it from my resume? It's there. I ever get a show on CBS, I go into a meeting with you. And they go, we love the show, but there's a problem. We do the background check, which they do. Before they give you a big check, wait, they just give you a big check. They want to make sure you're not a fucking offender in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, now, they, now they'll check your Twitter and your yeah. Facebook, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now it's it's serious. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to fucking look at your fucking, uh, make sure you're not fucking giving out lollipops in Culver City after 3 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you over down the corner in Culver City at the fucking thing giving out lollipops and giving messages like little fortune cookies. Today's your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> little Spanish kids. If you sign here, Trump ain't gonna deport you, but come to the movies with me. <laughs> I'm taking you to see Moana. It's about Filipinos. What is it about? Polynesian people. Mexicans with fucking bikinis on. Same difference. Come on. <laughs> Lollipops for everybody. You all sit around with Michael Jackson style. Have some Jesus wine. What is it? Jesus juice. <clears throat> it's really fucking weird how these people act and they get away with it. I, if you're that fucking stupid and you don't see it coming around your kids, you got to keep your eyes open. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's a tough being a dad, isn't it? Yeah. You ever look at somebody and go, this guy's a pedophile? No, we had a pedophile in my neighborhood, though, who we were friends with. He was, uh, you know, he was a guy who lived a block from us. That we all, our families hung out and known him for 15 years. And then one day, uh, we find out he went to jail for uh, being a pedophile in falling, the neighborhood. Falling out of a tree with a, with a bag of yeah, M&Ms and right? a football helmet on. Yeah. Giving out baseball fucking cards and shit like those Carvel <laughs> ice cream cones. He would show up with like yeah. the team you wanted. Right. You're trying to get the Mets, but they always give you the Cubs. I got it for you. <laughs> it was fucking creepy, man. You know, man, I got to look you guys both in the face and tell you, I got into some bad fucking situations. I really did. And that's one situation that good Lord knows I fucking thank him for not. You know, who not, bro, when you do drugs, who knows what happens to you? You go to somebody's house, pass out, next thing you know, they Cosby you. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you wake up with chains around you, and you get dicked, and there's 10 cameras. Right. You come back the next day with the cops. It's a fucking priest's house with fucking crosses on the walls. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, right. Perverts took me down. I've been here for 28 years. <laughs> It smells funny, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I gotta stop eating these edibles with you, Lee. I'm getting too old for this shit. These are strong. The chocolate's strong as hell. What are you gonna do tonight, Lee? What do you got to eat at the house? Tell me the truth. 
Uh, I think Paula made chicken and rice. What type of chicken? I don't know. Barbecue. She made that last week. What type of rice? I think she made. I think she made chicken rice. It's like, chicken rice. Look at you. Yeah, chicken fried rice. You're a regular fucking lucky dude. No lasagna. No, nope, not yet. Not yet. Huh? No Blue Apron. Uh, Blue Apron came last <coughs> last week. I think it's coming on Friday actually. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Remember those two we were talking about those uh, chocolate covered strawberries that we used to do ads for? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Sherry oh, berries. Things oh yeah. <laughs> Fucking well, berries. What happened to those things? I just remember we were uh Everybody got involved. They're back. They're trying to make a comeback. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody sent me an email with like a list of people if I was interested. Mark them down. Cherries Berries is trying to make a fucking comeback. Really? They were off the $2 per chocolate piece. They moved on to Greener Pastures. They're looking to fucking up the ante and see if you're interested. Yeah? For Valentine's Day, yeah. There you go. Nah, I don't want to fucking send chocolate to people's houses. That's <laughs> fucked up. Why? I got a couple boxes sent to the house. The one was good. The other one was men's and men's. Yeah, yeah. The other one was like, take your own chances. Yeah. I grew up in a place... 10 minutes of a place in Fairview, New Jersey that on Fridays, you couldn't even go up that hill because the whole side of that street across the street was double parked. While you were there, they dipped the strawberries right in front of you. Krauses. Krauses in Fairview. On Fridays, it was chocolate covered strawberries, Jack. They just hand it to you? No, you had to pay some gitas. They're not giving you a dick. No, but I mean, they, they dip it and hand it to you right How after How many you need? Six of them. Give me six of them, Pablo, in a box. The box would be little boxes, 12 boxes, the fucking Lee Syatt box, the Joey Diaz <laughs> box. Because I go in and eat 12 of those motherfuckers, and they were all hand-picked. This is the fucking 80s. Mm. Every strawberry was still wholesome, They would, and they'd dip them in that perfect chocolate, and then he'd put like a vanilla thing on top of it just as a fucking kick to the stomach. Yeah. Oh, my God. You took them to the car, and you could still feel the chocolate Moldy. It's like when you get that Dairy Queen ice cream, and they dip it into that chocolate yeah. thing, and they give it to you right away. Mm. Come on, dog. Yeah. There's nothing fucking better. It's the than greatest. That. It's the fucking greatest. Yeah. Same thing with that shit. How do we get talking about that? Anyway, speaking about eating, you got to sleep too. Sometimes you can't sleep. You got insomnia. You walk around. You eat fucking hagen doozies. You smoke some tutsuruts, and you can't sleep. <laughs> What it is is your fucking matches. See, you're unique. You don't walk like everybody else. You don't talk like everybody else. And you don't sleep like everybody. So why is your mattress one size fits all? For years, I had one of those mattresses you buy for 200 at a fucking farmer's market. $50, whatever. You thought you were the king of the world. Then you wonder why you're at the chiropractor 18 times a fucking week. <laughs> it's your mattress, cocksucker. Well, guess what? And... Anyway, you don't talk like people. You don't sleep like everybody. So why is your mattress one size fits all? Like I said, because a custom mattress will cost you five to ten thousand bucks until today. Introducing Helix Sleep, where you can buy mattresses online, customize for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to Helix. Go to HelixSleep.com. Answer a few simple questions based on four. Key preferences, and the result will be a custom sleep profile used to build you the most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on. Your mattress will arrive at your door in about a week, and shipping is 100% gratis. And for couples, gratis means you gots. It means free. 100% free, okay? That's what you want to hear. And for couples, Helix Sleep customizes each side of the mattress. Helix customers report a 30% improvement in overall sleep quality. I got one of the Helix sleep mattresses. I think it's fucking phenomenal. I don't even feel my wife getting out of bed. That's tremendous. So this is why everybody from GQ to Forbes is talking about Helix sleep. So do me a favor. Go to helixsleep.com right now slash Joey, J-O-E-Y, and get $50 off your order. Again, go to helixsleep.com 
slash Joey and get $50 off your order. That's helixsleep.com slash Joey, J-O-E-Y, and get $50 off your order. How's that one for you? Wow, that was a good read. You know I don't fuck around, people. I'm trying to make the best of what I got. I ain't got much, but what I got, I give you my fucking heart, all right? Let me talk to you people about something. Uh, I got a call from an agency. They asked me if I want to look at something. I took a look at it. The holidays are coming. I'm trying to give you guys a good deal, all right? The, the product came. We looked it over. Lee liked it. And there you go, all right? That's all that matters. We look at the product. We use it. We look, see how it feels. Lee looks happy with it. It's the black with the red in the middle. What I'm talking about is MVMT watches, all right? You want to know where you purchase it? This is the whole deal with these it's guys. Good-looking right? watch. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, the company was started by two broke <laughs> college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them. Plain and simple. They started their own watch company. You know how they did it? They started from scratch. They did podcasts. They did YouTube. They did radio, and they got the word out. Movement watches start at $95. At a department store, you're looking at a four to five hundred dollars. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and the retail markup, providing you with the best possible price. It's classic design, quality construction, and style minimalism. Over half a million watches have been sold in 160 countries. This is what I'm doing for you tonight. It's the holidays, all right? This listen, they start at ninety five dollars. This is what you get. You never know when people come over. They're feeling gloomy. You give them a watch, you make their fucking day. What it costs you? A yardstick? What do you give a fuck? Put it on the Visa card. That's right. Right now, today, I'm going to give you 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash church. Again, 15% off today. Free shipping, free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash church. All right? Listen, this watch is tremendous. Lee's been getting compliments from freaks. Everybody likes his watch. Now is the time to step up your watch game. You don't want to go to a New Year's party with some fucking Timex looking like Harvey the fucking, you know. Go to MVMT right now. I'm going to give you 15% off today with free shipping and free returns. Go to MVMTwatches.com slash church. How's that one for you motherfuckers? Man, I wish I was an advertiser on this show because you take it and you bring it to a whole other level. What do you want me to do? I got to put some heart into these motherfuckers. If I like the product, I want them to feel it at home. If not, I don't want to fucking pimp this shit out. Why? Why would I do something like that? I'm the last of the real McCoy, you know what I'm saying? Right. Who are you kidding? I'd sell you for fucking $50. <laughs> now, nah, hold on one second. I just want to talk to you people here from the heart. All right. You know me, guys. I'm a man on the fucking go. I'm always trying to make it happen. I try to watch shows, okay? A friend of mine told me to watch a show named Take My Wife on CISO. I started watching it with my wife. You know what? It makes me giggle. I love it. But most importantly, uh, my special is going to be out on it. Now, Lee likes it. Lee's watched CISO. I think he watches the Sign Night Lives on there. He said... But uh, I got to tell you guys something. What's the best thing you bought for three nine nine dollars lately? Well, for CISO, it's three nine nine dollars a month, and CISO has nearly endless supplies of top-shelf comedy bitches, literally months' worth of executive originals, face-melting stand-up, and next day, late night, and great catalog of classics. That's why my special is going to be on CISO. We all have your own unique taste. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got, they got, what are we talking about here? They got SNL, they got, they got British Late Night Talk Show, they got, with CISO, it's your comedy, you get comedy the way you want it, all right? CISO is the place for comedy. They won't tell you how amazing they are, but I will. CISO is amazing, and it's for comedy nerds, comedy nerds like Lee Syatt. Last night, not last night, I'm not going to bullshit you people. Two nights ago, I watched Harmon Quest, all right? And you know what? It was pretty funny. It's an original comedy. So you want CISO? Here's what I'm going to do for you. My special comes out 
December 8th. What is it today? November 11th, November 14th. It's going to be the 15th. Do me a favor. CISO. It's spelled S-E-E-S-O. All right. What I want you to do is they got every episode on SNL, including the day after. So they got The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. They got Seth Meyers. They got 30 Rock. They got Parks and Rec. They got Saved by the Bell. They got British comedies. The Office of Ricky Gervais. They got Monty Python. Listen, do me a favor. I don't care what you do. Do this for me personally right now. To all you guys, I'm going to give you two free months of CISO when you use promo code Joey at checkout. All right? Shows you can't get nowhere else. Just go to CISO, S-E-E-S-O.com right now and sign up for two months free with promo code Joey at checkout. That's CISO.com, promo code Joey. The best thing is, we get to hang out together in the month of December. You can play the special for your fucking uncles, all right? Knock yourself out. Have a great night. I want to thank CISO. I want to thank Helix Sleep. I want to thank MBMT Watches. And I want to thank Honor, as always. Go to Honor.com and get 10% off. On it slash church. Boom. C-H-U-R-C-H. And you're getting 10% off. Again, stocking stuff is bitch. I'm looking out for you. I'll see you Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Be there or go fucking shoot yourself, all right? Not to mention, don't forget my main man, Greg Fitzsimmons at Flappers. What time? November 17th, probably 8 o'clock. That's Thursday night, 8 o'clock. Go to flappers.com right now. They either got Burbank or Claremont. You want to go to Burbank? They got fucking Beanie's Brewery. Uh, what they got? Barney's Beanery. Barney's Beanery. Down the block. You go in there, you watch a game, and then you go see my man fucking Greg. I'm setting up the night for you. And then if you smoke a joint before Greg, at Flappers you get a nice order of wings and get the nice cheese plate. One thing about Flappers is they got great food. You get a little high and you watch Greg Fitzsimmons, who's better than you. I love it. Me, I'm at the Come and Get It Festival, Friday night, 10 o'clock show. The tickets are $35 for the all-day festival. Come to, what's the name of the website here? What the fuck? Come and get it. Listen, Google comeandtakeit.com festival and the date will come up. And you buy the one-day pass for Friday, it's 35 bucks. all right? Number two, I got the improv in uh, Irvine the night before Thanksgiving, the 23rd, 8 o'clock show. I'll get you out of there by 10.30. You go to your bars and see your buddies from college and snort blow and get ready for turkey, all right? I love it. I love you guys. One more time, Greg Fitzsimmons. One more time, my man, Lee Syatt. Uncle Joey loves you motherfuckers with all my heart. Stay black. See you Wednesday.